Good evening, race fans, and welcome to coverage of the Irish's Lounge Podcast Oval Series Live tonight from Dover International Speedway in Dover, Delaware. I am James White, the voice of the Podium Esports, alongside Rachel Whiteford, and we've got a special guest, Michael Guerrilla, helping us on Pit Road. Unfortunately, we don't have enough love for him to actually be in the graphic you see on your screens now, but we do love him a lot. But in any case, the most important part, I think, to note today, Rachel, this is the first time, I believe, in the history of Podium Esports where we've had a race that's going to be run in sim at the same time as it was in real life. Obviously, the real life Cup Series was at Dover earlier today, and they took the green flag at 2.30, and we're going to take the green flag at 2.30 p.m. Eastern in sim on October the 6th. So one of those interesting little quirks that we've got with the beta UI setup, which should make things a little bit different. I would imagine that this track's going to be a little bit cooler, and it's not going to race quite the same as it would if we were running here on the default day used in sim and i racing may 15th i think i'll definitely make things different of course but the bigger thing for me that i think i'm going to be excited about though is the multi-class racing here that's going to be a very interesting thing for me to see first time i've seen it happen at dover and dover is more difficult than most other tracks when it comes to that there's not a lot of different lines passing is going to be very hard this is going to be quite an interesting race, especially as the two different cars will tire deck at different rates. So we're going to see a very dramatic difference in performance here. Dover's exciting normally, but this is going to take things up a notch. And the weather differences will make things much, much more interesting for the drivers to have to handle. So looking forward to a fantastic race here today. It's a generally simple layout, this mile long oval. But the, the tricky thing, I think, more than anything else, it's the way you come up off the corners onto the straightaways in the way that you can't really slam down on the throttle unless you want to spin yourself into the inside retaining walls and then the way these corners tend to tighten up they are very very narrow exits both at the ends of turns two and four and i have zeroed out in my mind that we are going to see people bounce off those parts of the walls and run into trouble at some point during tonight's race I definitely think that is going to be an expectation, especially with the multi-class element in here. We're definitely going to see that. And we've heard the truck, the, sorry, the experience setup can be pretty loose around here. So I think this will be quite a challenging race for the drivers. But for the viewers, that means it's going to be that much more interesting. Should be very, very interesting. As we take a look at the point standings, as we wrap up the final few minutes of qualifying here in Class B racing those stock cars that you'll see in tonight's race seth hatchell is your leader by five over his vsb teammate chris Moran, and it's patrick shelton david schildhouse and john theodore also in the top five in class c it's another vsb driver keith Mato leads the truck points and then Derek justice reese Bayham, ryan hill and timothy adams all within oh 20 points or so Of course, close running in the championship is going to make this one much more tense for them. Of course, they know this is an opportunity to gain positions. Positions are more likely with tight gaps to mean more gains. Big, big gains for these guys. So they really want to do that. And of course, the further they are up, are up in the field, the more they can gain in the championship. So it makes for a scrabble, especially a track where restarts are going to be very difficult, especially once we get to old tires. And we will see a lot of that. As these drivers fight for the class titles and the uh, automatic entries into a future Podium Esports series or special event that comes with those. Now, we'll turn very quickly to Michael Guerrilla before we get ready here. As the man with the most driving experience on this racetrack and with these cars and trucks, what are you expecting out of tonight's race? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I'm expecting a lot of tire fall off. Uh, it, there's a lot of wear on these first initial laps, and the fall off usually tends to be around a second and a half to two seconds as the run goes on. So if we do get these long green fed lungs, just expect to see different drivers come and go, depending on how they wear that right front out. We saw that at USA last time out. That, uh, those who took care of their tires were able to take advantage of really uh, compared to the rest of the field that last time out. So. Just be watching that, and also to watch the exits of these corners. We, you talked about earlier how the exit tightens up compared to the middle of the corner where you have so much room, and then you tighten it on down to that one-lane track. So be careful to watch the side-by-side -side action go coming off the corners to some contact. We'll show you where we are on the map in the United States. This is 
Dover International Speedway in Dover, Delaware, the state capital, which is pretty relatively central within the first state, but close to a lot of major markets this track is. This is the track that effectively serves all of Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, and anything sort of within that range. This is the closest track to them, and to be fair, there are a lot of people within Richmond's reach that can make it out to Dover as well. So. A lot of major, major metro markets that get served by Dover International Speedway as we get set for 250 laps of racing this evening. It's time to take you through the starting grid, which is Nathan Jurgensen. For 51 get the pole with the time at 23.058 seconds. He's your fastest car in Class B. David Schildhaus will start from second. Third will be Seth Hatchell. Fourth, your winner of the opening round at Charlotte, John Theodore. Chris Samard will start from the fifth position. Sixth will be the 10 of Blake Earth. Rince Brown will start from seventh this evening. Eighth belongs to Sean Bounty. William Kemp will start from ninth. Jeremy Watts will start from 10th. Michael Jeans and Sean Kalis, the last two cars in Class B. They'll start 11th and 12th. Of course, uh, the second class is coming up next. That for tonight is going to be the trucks led by Derek Justice in the 31 with Keith Mayado behind him, Garrett Main, and Tyler Dalton with Gerald Campbell, Ryan Hill, Josh Bonwell, Derek Wyanoti, Robert Sparhawk, we've got Ryan Gemmel, Jose Mejia, we spam Justin uh, Botello, Tom Murano, Chris Carroll, Brian Zimmerman, Aaron Rodgers, Dave Shelter, Tyler King, and Adam Baker. 32 cars to take the green flag tonight across two classes here at Dover. It's a one mile, 1.6 kilometer length circuit that opened 50 years ago in 1969. Celebrated their 100th cup race tonight. Or earlier this afternoon, I suppose. 24 degrees of banking in the turns, nine degrees of banking on the straights. We're racing here October 6, 2019, 2.30 p.m. in Zoom time, just as it was when they set the green flag earlier tonight in real life. We'll go for 250 laps, 250 miles, 400 kilometers in the fuel window, about 70 to 80 laps. So you can expect at least three pit stops from these drivers. We're glad to have you with us here on the Podium Esports Network as we take the green flag and we are underway with racing from Dover. And it was an incredibly good start for David Schildhaus. And that number 20 machine jumps right ahead of Nathan Jurgensen. It goes straight to the point as off they go into turn two. And Schildhaus will lead everyone into three and down the back stretch the first time. Sonny Wilde here as the trucks separating out already from the uh, Fast B cars there. The 20 vehicles for now, so that's going to make things very difficult once we get to lapping, of course. There's going to be a lot of traffic, not a lot of different lines, which will make this one quite hard for them. But I am quite impressed to see some of the leaders in that class, like Justice and Co., keeping up with the slowest of the uh, big 20 vehicles. So that's going to make things very challenging. We've got a challenge for the lead there in that class. Garrett Maines coming up the inside there in the one. He is going to get the racing line off the corner there ahead of Justice, who's boxed in behind the 09 there of uh, William Kemp from the Xfinity. One car way up the hill. Jeremy Watkins in the 90 machine nearly hit the wall in turn one last time by. He'll gather it back up, but not before he loses a few spots to some of the trucks back there. I saw Gerald Campbell clear him, as did Keith Bayana, as has Tyler Dalton. So Watkins now back to 15th overall, 10th in Class B as it stands. His mains now leads Justice by about a truck length or two for the lead in Class C. Yeah, it really does, and it's definitely separating this one for us. But the front showed house romping away here alongside. Actually, no, he's not. He's fallen back. He's back to third place here. We've got the three of uh, Jurgensen out front now with uh, Seth Hatchell up there in second place. Fourth place, 77 machine of Simmet, who's fallen back a little bit. So the top three. Oh, big slide there from Shieldhouse. Shieldhouse's car. Perhaps a bit more loose than he would like it, it seems. He was fast initially, but right now it seems a little as we've got a caution on the right. Yellow flag, though, and we've got a whole stack up of oh, massive. cars on the back straight away, and it's turn two that bites people again. No surprise here. We'll bring the replay for you momentarily. But Jeremy seven. Watkins in trouble in the 90. I think he's the one that starts this as he gets yeah. way high in the middle of the corner, tried to gather it tried to get it straightened out and it ended up going loose going sideways and it left absolutely nowhere for Sean Kalis to go. Kalis pile drives into the side of the 90 and then a few more cars got swept up in this Justin Pacello with some damage. You see one of the 46 of the 38 actually both of those get caught up in the Jose Mejia Chris Carroll involved in this nowhere for 
One of the Kirkwood machines, the 12 of Tom King was stuck up in that. As we watch a few more onboards, we'll see what happened. You can see everything just unfolded in front of the 12, and he tried to get on the brakes and tried to end up just sort of leaving room on the top side, and there was just nothing he could have done. So a few of your trucks stuck away. In the back of this is Nathan Jurgensen leads the rest of the field onto pit road for the first time this evening. Got a little confused with how that one was operating there. I thought I saw the accident happening behind where the actual first one had. Yeah, definitely a mess. Off turn two is a bad one, but one thing about Dover is it is pretty self-cleaning. Not as much as Bristol, for example, but Dover tends to have everything go to the bottom. So if you can go high, you tend to be all right. Seeing accidents sitting in the middle of the track is very rare. So that was an unusual one, which is why I think it includes so many people. But no one's going to come in here and get fresh rubber and uh, fresh fuel. So reset on uh, lap number six. Not the first time that we've seen incidents like that take place. And it's uh, one of the cases where, especially right after the restarts, that you see a lot of drivers, if they get caught up in something and turn two, they stack up, and that very easily becomes a six, seven, eight car wreck like we had. I think there were five or six that were involved in that incident, and it could have easily been a few more if it had spread just a little bit higher up the racetrack. There wasn't much room for the drivers who escaped on the high side to get around it. So something that these drivers will have to be mindful of. But interestingly enough, we had one driver stay out, and he has now claimed the overall race lead and the lead in Class E, and that is the six of Gerald Campbell. So Campbell deciding that the seven-lap tire difference isn't too much for him, at least at the moment, could be about eight or nine before we go back to green flag racing. But Campbell will be your race leader and your Class C leader when we get back to the green. Yeah, certainly will be, and we've got a lot of laps left to run in this one. The drivers have to be very careful because this is their only car. So you end up in a big tangle like that, it puts major damage on you, which leaves you slow at the track or out of the race entirely. And I think Dover's going to be one of those tracks where we're going to see quite a lot of casualties in this one. And I think we'll see the first half of this race run pretty yellow and then become green. Now, this could be the only caution of the entire race, and I could be looking completely stupid, but... It's Dover. It rarely does that, apart from one time in the pros. And I think this time we'll see an early kind of spate of yellows. Then we'll just run green after that once we get to whittle things out. So everything gets sorted and shuffled here as and they run past the back stretch, past the casino, and past these bridges, which might have some of the coolest seats in all of racing. Those two to three rows that they've installed within those bridges on the back stretch, so you can sit and feel the car go right underneath your feet if you happen to have a seat over there. Gerald Campbell, though, your race leader, your Class C leader in Class B, it's Nathan Jurgensen, and they'll both bring us back to green flag racing as we go back under full pace once again at Dover, and Campbell will duck right to the bottom and make sure that Jurgensen gets lots of room on the top side. I have a feeling that that three car is going to try and pull the six down the front straight away and get that good run off the top side to get around Campbell. So he does. So Jurgensen back to the overall lead. Seth Hatchell up to second. And I have a feeling a lot of these B cars are just going to go to the outside of Campbell as he stays down low. Not to cause any trouble. And I think for him, the question will be how quickly do Derek Justice and John Fummel and Garrett Maines get up to him? So seven up the track there. He's run very, very high, but he's going to be back in line here. I think this will be definitely a telling portion. Is that we've got so many trucks and Xfinity cars mixed up now after that restart. With the speed differentials showing massively, Jurgensen pulling a big initial gap right now. He's got three tenths on the eight of Hatchell. Similar to the 77 there, Shieldhouse back in fourth place, lagging right towards the back of his front of four. No one near the same tightness we saw back to last time, so definitely a big variation here. Oh, big wreck, though. One car spinning on the back straightaway. Couldn't tell. I think it's the 36 of Keith Maiano who is going to have somebody run into the back. Couldn't tell who it was, but a big incident for the 36 to bring out the yellow. And that driver that got caught up in it was Tom Morano in the 42. He had nowhere to go. Ten. Maiano just stopped on the race. Lost it. The 10 lost the back end. He got high off the groove. And, well, the back end stepped out. He, his nose came down, and it tags the back there of Maiato which sends him sideways into the inside barrier, flips him around, and, well, that's what leads to our chaos. Blake Rowe that got some damage. He was the one who got loose and got into Murano. But Murano, or, or not Murano, rather, uh, Keith Mayato. Murano, Mayato, it all sort of runs together at this stage. But uh, Mayato, uh, just nowhere to go in maybe about the worst spot you could possibly be, and especially when you get caught like that, 
There's very rarely anything you can do. Very much an innocent bystander in that uh, game. Plenty of room there. It's just the 10 was completely out of sorts. And then you know, the 36 just nosed it down into the inside retaining wall. So Miato likely done for the night. We're on it with a significant amount of damage as one comes down pit road again. That'll make things interesting in the points. Friendly reminder that Miato came into tonight as the leader in Class C. Now, there are two drops for these drivers to work with over the course of the season. And I imagine that this will be Miato's first drop of the year. But certainly one of those things that we'll need to make note of as we work our way towards the season finale on the Ovo Twin Ring Motegi in December. I'll be very excited. Twin Ring Motegi is quite the oval track, of course. Uh, makes things... I don't know, it's, it's unusual, of course, because you've got a very tight one and two. Three and four are much faster, lower banked corner, so... Flip that around, but you got it right. <laughs> actually, yes, there we go, then, so... But actually, yes, yes, you're right, it's tighter in three and four, so it's much more flat-out corner one and two. Three and four, much, much uh, kind of condensed, so you have to really break into that one. It's very weird. As everyone comes off of pit road and we look to see who's decided to take advantage of pit stops and actually come down for service and we see who's decided to stay out and it looks like three drivers have decided to refrain from pitting Derek Justice, William Kemp and Tyler Dalton, that trio uh, two trunks, one class B car Kemp will be your leader in class B, will be come back to the green flag within the next few laps but uh, they'll have, looks like about a six lap difference on their tires compared to everybody that just came down pit road That can be uh, majorly difficult, though, because we have got a report coming, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I actually had some info from inside the driver's chat that apparently the 10 uh, machine of Blake Griffith had a technical issue with his monitor uh, shutting off down the backstretch, and that caused the, the wreck down there. So he was just trying to avoid action, trying to get away from all the competitors around him, but I believe the 10 might have lost connection to his monitor and caused him to be erratic down the backstretch, causing that it I'm pretty surprised about that one, actually, uh, James, because it looked like the back end stepped rather than him not knowing where he was going. He held his line perfectly. The car seemed to want to leave it. Maybe, but if you get on the throttle a little bit too much in the middle of the corner, that also could cause the same sort of problems the pair have had. So it's not totally out of the question, but usually the, it's not like Blake to just completely go crazy like that. I had a feeling that something would have happened there because he's usually not the type of driver to just lose it like that. Though Dover, in fairness, is one of the more difficult places to get around and it's tricky to get off these corners and actually carry speed the right way. Before we go back to green flag racing, we send out two thank yous to M. Striga and to Tony B. 341 and both subscribing to the Podium Esports Twitch channel. We thank both of you for your continued support for the best competition in sim racing and uh, we look forward to seeing, answering in particular, when Kilo Martin off on the next event for the Stock Car Challenge Series powered by iRacing iFlag in a few weeks' time from a place that you'll know pretty well, Rachel. Brand Sands, the Indy course will be up next for them. But we've got a restart to deal with first. Derek Justice will be your overall leader, your Class C leader. William Kemp is second overall. He's the leader in Class B. Then it's Tyler Dalton, Sean Boundy, Garrett Maines, two trucks, and then Boundy in the B car. Then Jurgensen, Hatchel, Samard, Schilphaus, and Theodore, your overall top ten. They are all Class B cars. And, and then behind all of them, you've got Campbell, Bonwell, Gemmel, Sparrow, Zimmerman, Bayham, Rogers, Shelfer, Wyandotte, making up pretty much all of the spots from 11th to 20th. So uh, B cars showing their prowess and their muscle early on. But what can Derek Justice do as one of the fastest trucks this evening? The answer is going to very, very good restart as Kemp spun the tires a bit on that inside line. So Justice will jump out by a few cars slash truck lengths, depending on what you're racing here. But in either case, plenty of room for him to run. And Kemp will have to fight off Sean Bounty on the outside. And the trucks here are catching up in the Xfinity car. So the tire degradation definitely being a big factor here as the one and nine, second and third there in class looking for a way through this one here. They don't seem to be able to find a way past those two Xfinity cars that may not have fitted. So newer tires are the trucks, older tires on those guys. And look at that gap now, just as pulling out. It's huge, nearly a second, in fact, at this point. As they're just trying to find a way through this double car blockade that's holding up the field. 
You can see the difference in speed just off of the difference in tire wear between Kim and Garrett Maines. Maines basically has to stop in the middle of the corner in order to get around the 09 machine as he clears Sean Boundy in the 34. Boundy stuck up on that high side and Maines is pulling along the eight of Seth Hatchell in the V-Speed machine. Those two beginning to work their way away from the rest of this pack as everybody else is bottlenecked behind Boundy and Tyler Dalton, who was one of the drivers that stayed out. Yeah, so I mean, it's single fighting out now as we're trying to get past traffic in this one. We definitely spread the field a lot more than I think we might have done earlier on. Uh, so the mixture is really interesting here that with the degradation be so different. And after these restarts, Xfinity cars mixed with trucks, definitely making for a very demand race, I think, for these guys. Because they're all taking different lines slightly and it's going to affect how they have room to Especially when you consider you've got to figure out how to navigate the Class C trucks if you're in one of these Class B cars, as you see John Theodore working the bottom of Tyler Dalton right now and bringing Chris Samard in the 77, Gerald Campbell there, Rince Brown, everybody all along with him as the 19 continues to slide back on those old tires. Also, I have to make the point, we've got people from Australia watching that are saying hello in chat. So, Rachel, and clearly your fan base is an international one, although uh, I'll tip my hat to any Aussies watching and say I will be watching your somewhat important racing events next weekend which it's only you know slightly influential and you know kind oh, of oh did he get contact they did make contact there yeah shield house yeah that was very close as he rode up towards the 09 gets through on the low side there is a little bit of contact with the wall for the 09 for him is uh yeah it's nice to see some of my friends up there uh watching this one it's good to see you guys in the chat and those of you who come from either twitter or from anywhere else <laughs> hey come to enjoy a good race yeah, uh, come to enjoy a good race. It's, it's it's not quite Bathurst, but Dover will do well as we go and turn our attention back to the 27 of John Theodore, who is up on the top side of the six of Gerald Campbell. Campbell currently third in Class C. Theodore ninth overall, seventh in Class B in this train of B cars that have managed to jump out in front of the trucks once again. And Campbell is in the middle of a sandwich of them because he's got Theodore in front of him and Rents Brown behind him. Yeah, it really is there, and they're going to try and do what they can in terms of making this one move forward. The, the track is definitely a majorly congested zone right now with the differences in performance, and the Xfinity cars initially looked so much faster. Now, though, the truck's really kind of balancing this out here as I see there Chris Simard in the Xfinity car there moving below the 34 car of Bandy. And he's getting himself a spot here, moves himself up to seventh place in class as... Uh, it's kind of exciting to see him push forward like this. Actually, now it's going to be fifth place in class, I should say. I apologize for that one. But we're eating great laps now. 25 laps in. We're a tenth of the way done. There's 250 laps. So we'll probably take a bit of time, but it's definitely a position where it's going to be an exciting result regardless. I'm just loving to see how varied this has become in terms of competition. But people start to get loose, though, and I think that will definitely get worse because this setup is very loose. So likely to see these guys getting a bit snappier as tires rub off and they end up having to turn a little harder into the corners and that puts them in a more difficult position here as I'm going to keep my eyes right now on uh, Jurgensen who right behind him has the one of uh, Mains who's actually wanted to get back past him. I wonder if that might be the issue with the 34 of Sean Boundy. He was the first car to come out of pit road but Boundy has struggled with the feel of He's Class B machine and has slipped back to 8th overall, 6th in class. And it doesn't look like he's able to get down on the apron the way he wants to, or at least near the apron. Wonder if he's struggling a little bit with the looseness of the car already. And I thought it was a little bit odd that he had pressed tires and that couldn't quite fast as done on Kemp and company back when they were at the front of the field on this restart. But I wonder if Michael Gorillia can tell us a little bit more about the setup and what he thinks these drivers would be experiencing some 15, 20 laps into a run. Yeah, I did test out both of these setups, and especially for the Xfinity car, I did more laps on that one. But as far as the Xfinity car goes, uh, on the initial part of the runs, you have a loose off condition for the middle off as soon as you put that power down. So it's really hard to keep that car straight up off the corner so that we come out of the corner because the, uh, the way the banking changes, you come out of the corner, you have elevation change. Uh, so as the run goes on, that should be progressively worse if you wear off that right rear tire. It'll, it should be a lot snappier on exit. But if you wear off that right front, you'd be able to get a little bit tighter and a little bit straighter off the corner. 
uh, which will allow for that car to be good off the corner. Uh, but as for the trucks, of course, they have the power deficit, so their loose issue wouldn't be as much due to their power deficit, and they should have an easier time handling compared to the Xfinity cars. Makes a lot of sense when you think about all of that. We'll just have to see if it plays out that way as I see Gerald Campbell step out and get a little sideways on corner exit coming out of turn four. But by and large, these Class B cars have asserted their dominance at the top of the pylon. It's all but three of them uh, in the top 10 are out of Class B. The shot cars here, only three trucks in the top 10. There's Seth Hatchell has jumped in front of Derek Justice for the overall lead, but right now with Garrett Maines, as he tries to find off the 77 of Chris Savar, who, oh, by the way, happens to be your points leader in Class B. Yeah, certainly that's going to be a big advantage for him right now, but it means he has got a target on his back to consider, and that will be an impact, of course, in terms of how he races. But look at this one, Hatchell and Justice, the two class leaders, running nose to tail here which I'm actually pretty impressed by. The truck here of Justice right up behind the uh, the Ace of Hatchel. And I think he actually might be catching him. The truck's better in the long run, question mark? Certainly something that we've heard a lot of drivers talk about when they've tested these two together. Something that we think is a little bit more prominent on the larger tracks. Definitely something that I thought we saw at Auto Club Speedway at the beginning of September a month ago. But maybe something that we could see here 40, 50 laps around. I don't think we've hit the point in a green flag run yet where you're going to see the difference, but as we tip over and as this race continues to string itself out, I think there's definitely a possibility that you can see the trucks really coming to their own in the back half of these long green flag runs. Yeah, certainly in the three there of uh, Jurgensen gets underneath the 31 of just making it 1-2 for the Xfinity cars right now. Shieldhouse goes again from behind. He's back up to third place, of course. Head there, Chris Simmons, who's actually dropped back a fair bit here. Our next truck in line, second place, back is sixth overall. That's Garrett Maines. Next one for them is tenth place, going to be Gerald Campbell. And then it's back to Tyler Dalton, Ryan Gemmel, running overall 13th, 14th place. So, another separation. Trucks generally are considered slower here right now. A couple of the guys who were damaged earlier on, like Callist from the Xfinity car, still running for the back. He's 25th. And Griffith and Watkins are out. So, right now, we have, I believe, 26 cars running on track. Keith Miato has actually hit pit road here. He's gone for a service, so Miato in off sequence. Yeah, Miata with that big damage from the earlier wreck and definitely not really going to be much of a factor this evening, unfortunately. I just couldn't, I had nowhere to go. I got clipped by Blake Griffith and was just sort of riding his line and then all of a sudden he was sideways. One of those things that you just sort of throw out the circumstance in these cases. Uh, See, so we got a lot of people from all over the world tuning in. Australia, we've got the UK and Ireland, we've got Canada, Ohio, Knoxville, Tennessee. Probably shouldn't talk about football. But, uh, <laughs> a lot of people from Ohio watching, I can say that. Right, right. So um, uh, we'll watch and see how things shape up amongst the rest of the group but i have noticed that nathan jurgensen's beginning to run down south hatchel as they both cleared Darren justice and david Childhouse is starting to work over the 31 machine oh got a near spinner we have got a spinner and it's a truck on the start finish straight there that was gamel who kept it straight though we didn't get a caution but man he was sideways he got loose, replay down your screens, he gets himself into the guardrail, holds it in, holds it up there. Good race craft from him there. He's back, but he's heavily damaged at this point, as that's going to really screw him at this point. That absolutely should have been the third yellow flame. Race credit to Gemmel for getting that corner up on the wall and out of harm's way, especially in the corner entry that could have so easily been very, very different. But as it stands, Gemmel now back to 20th overall. Yeah, not where he'd like to be in this race, but unfortunately those things will happen, especially at Dover. Kind of lucky there wasn't a course of caution. Um, 41 laps in here, we're really starting to clock these away now. We're under green flag laps. The two cautions really ate into our timing, as it were, but now we're under green. We're definitely seeing that separation come through. The trucks are sliding backwards in the field as they were before, and uh, we're kind of bouncing this out. So we continue to work our way through the first quarter of this race. We'll go back to Michael Garilli. He has a report on what happened with the 90 of Jeremy Watkins very early on in this race. 
Yes, indeed. And 90 Watkins was involved in that huge uh, lap five wreck coming off turn two that had to pile up with Sean Kalis, uh, Keith Maiato, and numerous drivers. As actually, we have caution. Of Bye, no. Big Mouth. Ryan Gemmel in trouble once again, and this time it does bring out the yellow flag. So, Gemmel, same thing, just too much throttle on corner exit coming out of turn four, and eventually uh, this time he looped it and had nowhere to go, and a pretty good job from Missed Ryan everything. Zimmerman in the 22 to avoid the 11 as he came back up onto the racing surface and up towards the high end of turn one. But uh, Gemmel with a fool me once, fool me twice sort of situation, and the second time he wasn't quite as lucky. So we have our third yellow flag of the evening. I was more impressed that he missed absolutely everything, including the pit exit on that spin. He could have slammed into everything, but that was really, uh, really, really lucky moment for him there. But everyone's going to get trash tires here, so we might shake this one out. See how everything sorts out as Hatchell brings everyone down pit road. I haven't really had too many battles for the lead, but... I think more importantly, this is the first time where we've had a long enough green flag run to where no one is really considering the idea of staying out for track position. It is very clearly a moment for all drivers to come down pit road and get fuel and get tires and make sure that they're all in good shape to go to somewhere in the ballpark of about lap 110, 120. So if you're really, really good, maybe you can stretch it, but that uh, will see how it shakes out and if we get the chance to stretch as everyone comes on for pit road and i believe Derek justice managed to beat seth hatchell out for the overall lead yeah he has indeed which will be a big one for him there hatchell now is going to be no yeah you're right justice has gone out front so truck starting in the front row here I think pretty much everybody came here for service, so we're not going to see that mixture of old tires on restarts. No one's really staying out at this stage on old tires, which, I uh, want it's good for track position. I think it's a little bit early. Also, David Schildhouse did not have the best of pit stops. He slid through his box and had to back it up to get into his stall, so he'll fall from, I think he came in about fourth overall, and he'll come out ninth. Yeah, not ideal for him. But, again, there's a lot of race left to go. We're still looking just over 200 laps, so plenty of time. A lot of time for these drivers to get back after it as uh, Derek Justice will once again lead the field to the green once uh, they wave around the 46 of Jose Mejia. So at least two laps before we go back to green flag racing. And as we work our way near the quarter mark of this race. We'll take a moment to remind you that tonight's broadcast of the Irishers Lounge Podcast Civil Series is brought to you by the Irishers Lounge Podcast. The Irishers Lounge Podcast is the premier podcast devoted to covering iRacing. Fans can tune in weekly to soundcloud.com forward slash iRacers Lounge to listen to the latest iRacing news, driver and broadcaster interviews, race reviews, opinions, discussions, rumors, and more. More information this is the Irish Lounge Podcast, Facebook, and Twitter page. Uh, oh, by the way, if you get bored, yours truly has been on one of those episodes a few weeks ago. I know they had uh, Evan Pasoko on about a week after. They had a little a sort of run of getting broadcasters on as guests, but uh, I know they've had bigger guests, too. I've seen Mitchell DeYoung on there a few times. I think Rudy Van Buren was a guest. So... Uh, big time names that you'll find on the Irish and Lounge podcast and uh, a lot of fun what Mike Ellis and his group have set up over there. So definitely hop on over to soundcloud.com forward slash Irish Lounge to go tune in every Thursday to the premier podcast in iRacing. As the wave around goes to Mahia, we'll get the restart lined up, go back to green flag racing on lap 47 of 250. Derek Justice is your overall leader and your Class C leader. Seth Hatchell sits in second. He's the Class B leader at this point. Then it's Jurgensen and Shamard, and then Mains are top five. Mains is the only other truck in the top ten besides Gerald Kimball, who sits in tenth. But it's John Theodore, Renz Brown, Sean Boundy, and David Schiltenhouse. Those four all Class B cars. So, again, mainly Class B at the front of this field, save for Derek Justice and Garrett Mains. Now, Michael Jeans and William Kemp for the two class B cars outside of the top tens within this sort of bunch and then you get to 13th on back Reese Bay and Tyler Dalton company that's all class C and that's everybody from fourth in class C on back 
Yeah, it really is. We'll get rid of this restart this time by. We'll get that green flag waving again. Justice leads the way here with Hatchell in second on the inside. Always tricky to restart on the inside. There was Justice gets a massive lead there, as you always expect here at Dover. No problems on that restart. A nice clean green restart. No one having any major issues. A lot of damaged cars at the back. Hobbling across the line here. Or perhaps being a little cautious. Not sure about that, but again, Justice. Slower class of car, but banging it out the lead again. Yeah, Justice with another really good restart. Easy to just launch here just with the way people have to be worried about tire spin, especially when you're following the leader on the restarts. But the way the banking is, very easy to get these tires over-rotated as David Jurgensen is now racing alongside Seth Hatchell and Christian Mard is there with John Theodore and Garrett Maines. That's where the battle has developed early on in this green flag run as Justice... Cleared this group, but Hatchell's beginning to run him back down, and now Jurgensen has cleared himself. From the oh, group. near problem there. Six truck of Campbell had a big moment through three and four, got sideways. This oh, uh, big avoid there by the 08 and the 19, who managed to get rounded with no contact. A little bit of contact actually there, replay for you. A little bit of contact for the 08, but straightened him up and kept it going, and no. Probably should have been another incident, but again, credit to Joe Campbell and Michael Jeans for keeping it straight and keeping us under the green flag as we continue to push on and see who is going to run up and catch Derek Justice and Seth Hatchell and company. I can tell you now that Hatchell is beginning to really reel in Justice. Now, granted, they're not really racing each other per se, save for pride. Now that the winnings and the points are kept per class intentionally here, so... Uh, not much besides the overall win that you're looking at, but uh, even in that case, you know, race car drivers are going to be race car drivers, and they're still going to want to make sure that they beat the next driver on track. So it could be fun to see what Justice and Castle could do, especially since Justice really seems like the only truck outside of Gary Mains who has really figured out this place. He's got the line down pat better than just about anybody else, maybe even in Class B, too. Yeah, that's the thing. You get some guys who work the truck out here, and they are stupid fast. Again, could be even more so sometimes than these 30 cars. But they're actually kind of balanced, because whilst the truck is a lot looser in the back end and can rotate through here under power, uh, the X20 car is much more of a momentum-based car when it comes to the track here in Dover. So the two different styles result in, even though there's different power between the two vehicles, a very similar lap time. Just not entirely similar, unless you're good, as we've seen. That plus... With the way that the engines changed in Class C, the trucks got completely re-geared and retuned to the Elmore engine in the June update that iRacing released, and that brought the tie into their RPMs way, way down compared to where they were. They now top out at about somewhere in the mid-70s, about 7,500, where they were about uh, 8,000, 9,000 uh, back before everything got retuned. So, uh, that definitely also changes the way that these trucks tend to race this place, especially when you compare them to the Class B cars that are still way, way up at the revs when they're down towards the end of these straightaways. Yeah, certainly, and I think it's one of those things they're gonna have to really consider, but it's just one of those circumstances here that you've got to play this race by ear. It's not over till it's over, and with 195 laps left to go on this circuit, it's gonna be a lot about maintaining your position on track and just staying alive, because when these cars get total, there's not much you can do about it. A crash at Dover is usually pretty race ending. As we watch now, here comes Seth Hatchell all over the rear bumper of Justice now. He has caught the 31 machine, and Nathan Jurgensen is right there with him, and it's a three-car battle for the overall lead, and we've got the Class B lead also probably about to be up in the air, too, because Jurgensen's there to attack and move, and Hatchell slips up in some way, shape, or form, and that gives up some ground to the 31. Yeah, it really does there, and the 31's going to do what he can to try and get this one moving forward. Again, he's really putting some massive power in here. Hatchell and Jurgensen are going to court him, and they're going to get past him. It's going to be a very tricky position for him to be in. Also, a big thank you to G-Benson 208 for their subscription to the Podium Esports Twitch channel, and a big thank you to G-Benson 208 for their continued support for the best competition in sim racing. 
Justice is still out in front of this, but for how much longer? And oh, by the way, there's also a battle that's brewing for third because Chris Smart is all over the back of John Theodore, your race winner in Charlotte, to open up the season at the beginning of August. So Justice will continue to carry on with the lead for the moment. I wonder if Hatchell might be in a place where he's just happy to sort of sit and ride behind the 31 and maybe watch what Justice is doing and maybe not necessarily press the issue so much, but he has to be careful because Jurgensen's right there to keep him honest. Yeah, he really is. And I don't know why, but at some point, I really feel like I need to make a justice has been served reference for some reason because it feels like a buzzword. Maybe that's just my mind at the moment, but dang, Derek Justice is, you know, kicking butt out here on the racetrack for a truck to be out front of the Xfinity cars to the fastest Xfinity cars. In that's an impressive achievement from him, but it's a track I think that suits the truck a little better than the Xfinity vehicles. I think if you know what you're doing with the truck and justice, I don't, I, I think I might have seen him race a few things other than the truck a few times, but this is a driver who, when he's not racing here, the Cody of Esports and he's running in official racing and, and streams it on his channel, Justice on Twitch. He is always, always in an official truck race. I'm not sure if there are too many people that know this Class C vehicle in the sim better than he does. So I'm not totally surprised that he's got enough track time here to figure out how to run this place in a way that puts his times right in line with what you're seeing out of the Class B cars who should in theory be faster with that extra power down the straightaway, but neither Hassel nor Jurgensen have found enough speed yet to get around the 31. It's also the truck rotates better, so I think it's definitely the fact it comes through the corner way, 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 way better than the Xfinity cars. You'll see them pull on the straight, but the truck pull it does rotate through the center of the corner better. We know that the truck handles better than the V car, but the V car's got more power. It's sort of the difference between a sports car and a gigantic muscle machine that just drags down a straightaway. If you consider the truck to be a little bit more sporty and, and that class V car to have a little bit more of that raw speed to make things interesting. But now here comes Hansel down to the bottom, and now we'll see the change for the overall race lead. Justice won't make an issue of it. He'll slide back to third. So now it'll be all Hatchell and Jurgensen to figure out who wants to actually lead this race and lead Class B. Justice, meanwhile, is still in pretty good shape. He's got somewhere in the ballpark of about a two-second gap to that number one machine of Garrett Maines, who is currently second in Class C, seventh overall, and a bit of his own world. Not too far from David Schildhouse, but also decently far away enough from Sean Bounty, sort of running all by himself as he goes to one and two. Yeah, it really is. He's got a significant gap here to Mains, who's going to be about just about two and a half seconds back from him. So I'm going to able track with the, the traffic between the two of them. I think that's plenty of room for him to really sit here and race to the front bumper. As we now turn our attention back to that battle for fourth and fifth, John Theodore on the high side, Chris Samar down low as Theodore continues to hold off the 77 machine, but these two have been attached at the hip for just about the entirety of the screen flag run, but now here comes Samar down to the bottom, got a really good run on corner exit, and I don't know if Theodore will be able to hang on this time, but with Samar, who I think had the spot at the line and did, and now Theodore's going to slide up, and it will be the 77 who does finally make the pass. Theodore, oh, I think he might have given the 77 a bump coming out of the corner just to try and get him out of the way a little bit as Theodore tried to pull the crossover move, but he didn't have enough moment, and now it will be Chris Shamar, who currently runs fourth overall, third in Class B. Yeah, could have been executed slightly better there, but hey, it works. You know, it's, it's what does the job, and right now, we're seeing Hatchell and Nergerson start to pull away, so the new tires on the Xfinity car are helping, I think, in the long run here, but we did see them come back on a slightly longer run, so that is something to be considered. And we should see, likely, Justice will come back towards him, but... but... See if Justice says roll it all back. He's... A little bit of extra notes here from our friend Michael Guerrilla on some of these truck drivers, and in particular, your top two in class. See, at the moment, Derek Justice and Garrett Mays, they both ran road to pro. Justice finished 26 in the points, Mays 23rd. So uh, they both have speed in these trucks compared to a lot of drivers in high racing and know what they're doing with these things and can put on a pretty fun show when you force it to. We saw it a lot in the truck series that we ran on Sunday nights here at Podium Main Sports in the first part of 2019 those two really had a lot of fun with it like going back and forth and back and forth with each other 
yeah, it's a lot of fun to actually race those vehicles. It makes for great watching for us here in the booth and those of you at home. Um, the more exciting the car's handling, the better the racing, I think. You know, you have a car that's very boring, like the Xfinity car, it tends to lead to generally worse racing. Not always, but generally. Generally, generally, certainly something that you see bumped every once in a while. I, mean, I suppose we're happy to do it here at Plenty of Sports, but in the meantime, just waiting and watching and seeing who's going to really jump up. Pretty good battle for 8th and ninth overall, 6th and 7th in Class B between Rince Brown, Sean Bounty. But a bigger battle for P1 as David Jurgensen has jumped underneath Seth Hatchell to try and take away the overall read in the race lead, and Jurgensen is going to hold it down to the inside. We'll see how they run when they come out of the corner, and if Jurgensen can beat Hatchell to the line, that's with a good run, though, so he'll maintain the lead for the moment. He's going to go for it again here on the low side. The three coming through. Not going to have enough this time by, though. It'll still stay. Oh, wall. Again, twice in the wall. Right up near it. Absolutely no breathing room between the car of the number eight and the wall as they're starting to slide over. They're really beginning to lose the rear end grip on these cars. Maybe not a surprise. We're already 30 laps in to a green flag running. You're starting to see the back ends of these machines slide around a bit. You see it there with Hatchell. Didn't get the greatest of exits out of turn two. So that's allowed Jorgensen to close back up within a car length or two. And Jorgensen, I think, that may well just try and sit behind the eight, see if he can get the better runs. Definitely got a better run out of the corner that time, though. Laid off the gas just a bit. Got the car to rotate better on corner exits. So now, all Hatchell, all Jurgensen at the front of this, and a lot of line searching. Here comes Jurgensen with a big run down to the bottom, and Hatchell got loose out of the corner. So Jurgensen might be side by side with Hatchell and will be as they go into three. Yeah, he gets it underneath there now, and he's trying to try and hold it down there. Of course, these guys' teammates. So be careful how they're racing this thing. Actually, no, they're not. I apologize for that one, but doing what they can here to try and keep that car low. The low side works. This time back for three gets it underneath him. He went all the way up the road there. Hatchell with a good run, though, coming back down the back straightaway. Not enough to get to the three machine. So Jurgensen now to the point. Wasn't totally sure if Hatchell intentionally drove it up the racetrack and won that last time by, or if he just didn't quite get the corner entry right and ended up having to slide at the racetrack. But in either case, he goes up high. Jurgensen goes underneath him. He gets the lead back. And so it is Jurgensen out of Hatchell, now both for the overall lead and for first and second in Class B. Just is still well in control of that third spot overall and the first spot in Class C, although he's got company from Chris Smart and John Theodore right behind him. But he's more worried about Garrett Maines than anyone else. And Maines is well, well back. Absolutely. He's going to do what he can to try and make this one function. But Maines is losing time actually overall on justice the, the gap has actually increased slightly not a huge amount but it has increased so um he's not gaining which is what he needs to be doing i think that would normally i think that would normally be the way to go about it as we look at those of you who might have come in a little bit late this is the iRacers Lounge podcast Oval Series from Dover. Round five of this nine race season to close out 2019. Nathan Jurgensen is currently your leader, both in the Class B stock cars and overall. After just under 80 laps completed at the Monster Mile, yeah, we've had three cautions for nine laps with a handful of lead changes mixed in there as well. And we are on the second relatively long green flag run of the night. This might actually be the longest at 37 laps so far. Yellow flag out, though. Cars in trouble trying to figure out who it might be. Wonder might be Josh Bonwell in the 56 who's run into trouble to bring out the yellow flag. Yeah, that was one of those awkward ones, I think, on the track there. Just an uh, unfortunate moment. Brian Zimmerman with that golden horseshoe somehow avoiding things, subway somehow, but a weird one. And I think the same sort of issue that we saw with Ryan Gemmel earlier, just a little bit too much gas on corner exit for Bonwell. 
and he knows that, yeah, Zimmerman really did just get by the 56 of Bonwell, but Bonwell uh, down to pit row will get it fixed up, and, and right as I talk about a long green flag run, all of a sudden the caution very conveniently comes out. So, if you needed proof that the commentator's curse was alive and well, you're welcome. Oh, it certainly is. I brought it up earlier about them having a good chance, and boom, off they go. <laughs> it's one of those things. Yes, yes, as the chat rightfully gives me all sorts of shtick for jinxing this race and bringing us back under yellow flag, but it will give us the chance to see all of these drivers down pit road one more time as Jurgensen leads the parade onto what is unquestionably one of the toughest pit roads to get down in the whole of oval racing on iRacing. This is a notoriously difficult place to get down on the pit road to, and a notoriously weird pit road as well because they only have 42 stalls here back in the day there was the very awkward case that they had to have of 42 cars having their own stall or 41 cars having their own stall and then cars 42 and 43 having to share one at some point it was always a fun little story that a lot of the reporters have to tackle but not an issue that we've got here uh, 31 32 cars actually took green flag tonight and we got room for all of them on pit road. It doesn't look like there are going to be too many changes, save for the fact that Derek Justice lost a spot to Christian Ward. And I think he and Garrett Mains are going to be nose to tail for this restart, or at least side by side. So that could be entertaining. We haven't really seen a battle in Class C yet, but I have a feeling we're about to have one. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think that's going to come up with, especially with the new tires, everyone's going to feel ready to push a little harder. Um, they're on lap 80, so we're basically at a fuel tire run window here. So this is a normal pit stop point for them. So this is going to set out perhaps the next 80 or so laps for both. As we all work through another yellow flag period here, working lap 83, soon to be 84 of 250. Michael Garilia, while we're under the yellow flag, have you noticed any trends from this green flag run, have you been able to pick up on bits and pieces for the drivers of the Class B and Class C cars from that driver's perspective that you have? Yeah, I have. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that the B cars have been able to struggle more on exits of the corners with traction compared to the trucks. And like I said, that was earlier due to the uh, power issue. But one thing I noticed is that right around that lap 30 uh, part of the run, we were noticing a lot of differences in who's coming and who's going based on their tire wear. So right around that mark is where you're going to start seeing the, uh, the tire wear play a factor here. And this caution comes at a very interesting point here because uh, we're working lap 84 of 250 right now. So they're setting up for a potential one stop here as they can split it in half with 82 and 83 lap runs to make it to the end but it's gonna be close on fuel so they'll have to see if they can make it to the end on a one stop but it, more likely most people will be doing a two stop here you would have to stretch the fuel already but more importantly here at dover i think you'd have to stretch the tires because it just seems like tire wear dictates everything far more than fuel wear does here in kind of a racetrack where you don't really have to worry about fuel all that much unless you're going really, really crazy because the tire wear and then the tire degradation, as our friends with the proper British English would say, uh, that uh, the, the deck is just so, so bad. The fall off is so, so bad that it, it largely makes fuel conservation. I wouldn't necessarily say irrelevant, but it loses its, its point when your tires are just going to be that dead at the end of a green flag run. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's one thing they have to balance is not running too hard at the start because they don't want to get into that situation of actually, you know. As we wait for the next green flag to come out on lap 86 of 250, Jurgensen will be your leader and your control car and your class B leader. And he'll start from the outside. Seth Hatchell second in class B. Derek Justice is your leader in class C. And he... We'll start, I guess, chatty corner from Garrett Mays, the one machine. Mays is sixth overall at the moment, just his third overall. Those two are the first two Class C drivers here, and then you've got Tyler Dalton and Ryan Hill in the back half of the top 10 and ninth and 10. Then it's Samard, Boundy, Jeans, and Brown, fifth, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, all Class B. So that gives you an idea of where drivers are spaced down. A bit more of an even mix this time as we go back to green flag racing. And Jurgensen gets a good jump. Hatchell goes to second. Justice to third, Samara to fourth, Maines 
clears bounty for fifth, so they're all going to be single file. Oh, big move there to the outside as they all stack it up nearly. The Justice almost got run over. Chris Amara to deduct to the bottom, and the man who took advantage of all of that more than anyone else, Garrett Mains in the one machine, jumped right on the top side and gained about two or three spots that lap. Yeah, so he did. that was a huge jump for him there, of course. And right now, I'm keeping my eye on Mains. He's really pushing, but he drops back now behind Simmet. As up behind him now, Boundy is coming up to try and take that spot from him. He'll get underneath him now through so three and four. Behind him, 24, 34, also making a move. 35 and 19 trucks pushing forwards as well. So a little bit of wall there for the 34. Kind of halts their momentum they had, but looks like the 24 might clear him in this. And the 19 is going to be there to stop him coming back down the track. But the 34 has the high side, so should have advantage into three and four here. Though we'll see. He gets high again. He loses more ground. Put your eyes on that one machine of Garrett Mains and look back to about the next five or six machines because that's really where the battle is as one car goes all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack. I think that might have been maybe Ryan Hill, Sean Bounty somewhere in there, but all racing tooth and nail for spots. And Michael Jean's beginning to make a move up towards the front of this field. We haven't said the OH name all that much up to this point, but he's beginning to make a decent charge. Started in the 11th spot, now currently running sixth overall, fourth in class. Jeans has managed to clear most of the traffic, and Mains is the next man in line for the driver of the 08. Absolutely, absolutely, but uh, it's definitely becoming a bit more contentious with every lap till we get into this thing. Lap 90 now, and I don't think people perhaps the patience begin to wear off in some quarters. I'm starting to see people pushing a little harder, like right now. I'm looking at Simmet, who's really getting up close to the back now of Justice. And I think he might be a little frustrated that he's got a different class vehicle blocking him from you know, getting up there with uh, Hatchell and Jack. So I think he believes he's fast enough to get up there with, but with Justice on the right line, he hasn't really got any options. Not really anywhere for Samar to go. He's just going to have to be patient, bide his time, and find his moment. He's got more pace. And now he'll stick it down to the inside, and Derek Justice won't make much of a fight there knowing that Garrett Mains is right behind him and the last thing he needs to do is lose enough ground in trying to fend off the 77 that it brings Mains right to the rear bumper of his number 31 truck so Samard will jump ahead of Justice go to third overall and in class and it will be his turn to go try and run down his teammate Seth Hatchell and then the race leader that three of Nathan Jurgensen. Yeah, very much so. Jurgensen doing what he can in this one as he really just pulls ahead now. He's really been a powerful car all day long from the start of this thing. And if I have to really pick who I think is going to be here in, you know, another 110 laps. No, 140 laps, I should say. Is that right? No, 160 laps. There we go. We'll get it right. Um, I think it's either Jurgensen or Angel's going to take this one. And it's because they've just been the two cars that have consistently out front. You would think that there's still a very, very long way to go in this race. We've yet to clear the halfway point of lap 125. That's really the first marker that I think these drivers are trying to work towards as we progress through this race. And then I think once you get there, you can start thinking about the back half of it. But uh, unless, I suppose, you're crazy enough to try and pull the one shot strategy that Michael Gorilla talked about just a little bit ago. As, uh, speaking of Gorilla, why don't we bring him in and he can talk to us a little bit about what he noticed with tire fall off. We mentioned that as a topic of interest a few times before already tonight. But Michael, tell us what you saw just with the fall off of the tires over that last green flag run. Yeah, so I looked at both the leaders in, in both B class and C class. And based off of Jurgensen's times, he started off at a 23, 371 and fell off to a 25 flat. And so roughly about 1.7 second fall off there for him. And Justice fell off from a 23.237 to a 24.941. So that's roughly a 34 lap run and about 1.7 seconds fall off over that run. So usually about that lap 35-ish, you see less fall off compared to the start of the run. So should roughly fall off to about two seconds in total. We'll have to see how the cars hang on throughout the rest of the run if they do go past lap 34. But interesting that you lose most of that time within the first 30 laps. And in theory, if you're going to stretch it all the way on fuel, that those last 40 to 45 are lamed up laps. Here comes the eight of Seth Hatchell underneath Jake and Jurgensen. And Hatchell's been pressuring Jurgensen for about the last five laps or so. 
and it won't be a contest this time. Hatchell back up to the front, back up to the point. Seth Hatchell now your overall race leader, and Chris Savard all of a sudden has just come right onto the rear bumper of the three machine and may well make this a three-car battle for the lead. And also, Derek Justice is having to fight off that one of Garrett Maines. Those two are nose to tail racing for the lead in Class C. Yeah, absolutely. And Class C has definitely been one of the more exciting ones, I think, so far. But we did discuss it earlier. The, the trucks just have that much more kind of flamboyant style around this track. Um, it's, it's kind of limited, but you did tend to see more of a diamond line from those trucks throughout most of the corners, which is a lot more consistent for them. And they are a bit looser, which does mean they can get a bit more wild when they're actually out there winning things. Most difficult corner, I think, though, for the trucks is definitely turn four. The Xfinity cars have much more balance in terms of how the actual car handles. The weight is more evenly distributed over the whole car. The truck, though, the back end is much lighter. So coming out of four, that can get really hairy, especially later in a fuel run. Can get very, very hairy indeed, as there's a little bit more of a gap between the 31 and the one at this point. But still very, very close as we've got two really good battles for the class leads you've got three cars fighting it out for the class b lead and then you've got justice and mains going after it in class c two more battles elsewhere on track to know and david shieldhouse now jumping to the top shot of tyler dalton he'll move up to eighth overall you've got ryan hill sean boundy together right there and a few more drivers spread out across the racetrack i think this is definitely one of the places where it's more about you and how you race the track and the challenges the track uh, maybe more so than it is the other drivers on the track it tends to be a place where you see a lot of drivers spread out across this field and people can get strung out very quickly just because this is a very difficult place to get around consistently well over a green flag yeah absolutely and it's going to make things difficult later on of course i think once the tires actually drop and they have to really show us exactly the difference in the trucks and infinity cars and, and just how that will really change the dynamic of this but i think pretty soon we're going to start to see lapping and that will be a major factor in how this thing plays out right now it's about a straight between hatchell and the first lap cars so we can see those first three cars here hatchell you know, just really have to work here and this will show who's not just fast but who can actually race in a crowd you can maintain pace maintain speed and keep it all together in one piece for the time being is it is that trio and then the quartet and then uh, Rince Brown trying to hold off Michael Jeans. If you slide a little bit further back, Jeans had a really good run through the corner. And Brown got really, really loose coming out of four. So this could be Jeans on the top shine making the pass. This would be for sixth overall if Jeans can go up top and get it done. And he will as Brown, I think, is already struggling for grip. So Jeans will jump to the top shine take away the spot from Brown and picked up a victory in his split the Petit Le Mans one night ago. Yeah, that's very true, of course. Uh, do you know what? I've actually been keeping my eye back here, actually, uh, James, down towards the bottom end of our Xfinity field and the start of our truck, uh, main pack of our trucks, which is a Ryan Hill, Aaron Rodgers there, running towards the rear of that. And they're actually catching up to Theodore here, back at the Xfinity lot, the 27. They're likely about to start passing him and catching up to the 18, or the 09 ahead of them, Kemp, who was running higher but had a few wall contacts, don't forget. So. The 9 is carrying a little bit of body damage, which will probably impact him. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And it's just enough, I think, to make note of here as Kemp rolls along. And currently 8th in class, 11th overall is the driver of the 09 machine. Theodore right behind him, 9th in class, 12th overall. As he tries to hold off Ryan Hill and Aaron Rodgers, those two trying to catch up to Tyler Dalton, but another yellow flag here, and Ryan Gemmel in trouble once again. The 11 machine around this time on the back straightaway, and he just lost it and tried to save it and couldn't hang on to it and looped it and nosed the inside retaining wall again. So the 11 in trouble one more time. The yellow flag out once again of note. That will be Gemmel's second strike of the night, I believe. So but should he be responsible for one more yellow flag, he will be parked for the evening.
Yeah, that's unfortunate. We're, way. we're on lap 109 here, so we're about 41 away from our halfway point in this race. Actually, no, that's not true. We're about 20 laps away from our halfway point in this race, so that's going to make things interesting to see how this has panned out. But this pit cycle will definitely change things. I think the trucks are a little faster when it comes to pitting, which is why we tend to see a lot of them push forwards in the pit cycle and get further in the grid for restarts. Is they're a little bit quicker on that uh, on that jack. Not by much, but I do think you're right about that. Ever so slightly quicker than everyone else's. Hatchell brings the field down to pit road for service, and then it's Jorgensen and Samard and Justice in Mains. That quintet, I have a feeling we'll talk about a lot tonight, barring the unexpected. I'm most curious to see how it shakes out. Once you start from Rens Brown and you go back, Michael Jeans, David Stoudhouse, it's a group of drivers who sort of waver depending on where their tires are and where they are in a tire run but uh, there's been some speed there i think jeans in particular has managed to come up i uh, didn't have the greatest qualifying run but has managed to come up and shake it up with these drivers brown has been pretty consistently in the back half of the top 10 all night long shield house has been around in the top 10 all night too tyler dalton's been all over the place depending on whether or not he's had fresh tires or old tires but it's been a pretty consistently strong car and as we get back to the surface Back to the racing line, back to pace house as David Shorthouse sped down at pit road and is going to get dinged by the speeding police and is going to get held to hillside all the way back to about 17th, 18th on track. Big penalty for the number 20 machine. He'll have work to do in the second half of this race to regain that track position. Yes, we can do that. We can do many, many fun things here on the Footy Resports Network. David Schildhouse, I heard that you may or may not have been hit by the speeding police. and You may have been busted there that last time by. Yeah, they got me. I was uh, I was towing the line, playing a little too much uh, fun and games with 35 miles an hour. There's some 36 that's allowed, but apparently at 36 for too long, they didn't like it. Uh, they're pretty particular about that here. But in either case, you're in this race. Uh, tell us what you've noticed with the way your car is handled and how it's evolved over the course of the green flag run. And then maybe throw that under the lens of this new time of day. We're racing in October in Sim 2. Have you noticed that changed the track a little bit compared to what you normally see at Dover? Yeah, I see that they brought out the ice rink here in uh, Do uh, Dover, Delaware, which is really cool. Um, it'll keep you on your toes. It's, you know, there's grip for a couple of laps and then uh, the rear grip starts to go away in the, uh, at least for the Xfinity car. And it looks like the trucks as well. Um, you just, you're really having to play with the throttle to keep the thing underneath of you. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun in a sense, but it's kind of terrifying in another sense that when you're in traffic, it can get a little hairy and uh, two runs ago, you saw I fell from like fourth back to eighth and uh, I just completely lost all drive in the car and I couldn't even barely touch the throttle. So I'm not sure how much the weather has to do with that. I'm sure it has something to do with it, but uh, it's keeping these drivers honest and, you know, it's keeping us active in the cockpit. That's for sure. The key, I think, is that you're having a good time, though. What do you expect in the second half of this race? More of the same or do you think with the track cooling down a little bit that maybe we see a little bit more grip in the track? Maybe it's a little bit easier for these drivers? I would never uh, be sorry to see more grip come our way. I think we'd all benefit from it. But, you know, halfway to go, I just dug myself a nice hole. So I got to run back up through the field here and do a little more passing. But, um, you know, as this field has been thinned out a little bit, James, I think we'll see more green flag racing like we have. Um, and, and we'll get this thing all the way to the end of lap 250. But I hope by the time that arrives, I'm back closer to the front. Fair enough. We'll let you get back to it, David. But thanks for taking the time to talk to us. And good luck in the second half of tonight's race. Thanks, everyone, and thanks to everyone watching on the Podium Esports Network. Hope to put on a good show. David Schildhaus, driver of the number 20 machine, who is going to restart in the 18th spot overall, way behind Seth Hatchell and Nathan Jurgensen and Chris Samar. That's your top three overall and in Class B. Justice and Mains are fourth and fifth. They run one and two in Class C. Brown and Jeans are sixth and seventh on the pylon for overall, fourth and fifth in class. Then it's Tyler Dalton, Sean Bounty, William Kemp. One truck, two class B cars to round out your overall top 10. As we go back to green flag racing on that 114 of 250. Good restart for Hatchel. No surprise, he's the control car that he jumps out ahead by about a car length or two. Jurgensen, Samar, Justice, Brown, Mains. Everybody got down to the bottom really quickly. The question will be who decides to duck back down to the inside as they come down the back stretch. And Garrett Mains is the first one 
one to try it. He'll get a nose underneath Brent Brown to go quickly, and Brown's going to slide away on the racetrack, and Maines will jump up into fifth overall. Big, big dive there by Maines. Aggressive move. He really wants to get on the back of Justice super fast here. In fact, just forcing the Xfinity class car out of the way there. Let's the 8 through, let's the 90 through. Contact there with the 19 and the 24 as uh, Brown there and Dalton got a little bit of a rub, but not too bad here as Maine's just not quite full momentum yet, but he's really coming up and back now of Justice, so we might actually have a battle for the first time here for the lead of our truck series. As Maine's has been digging and digging and digging and catching Justice and a point that Michael Gorilla made to us during that last row. We didn't get the chance to touch it, but uh, Maines looks like he's been watching Justice and learning how the 31 gets around this racetrack, and he's starting to stay on the rear bumper of Justice a little bit better. Justice has been the truck in Class C up to this point in the race, but Maines has gotten closer and closer and progressively closer as this race has moved into the middle portion, and I wonder if by the time we get to the end of it, we may have a very good battle for that Class C win on our hands. Yeah, certainly could make things definitely quite interesting for us as we get towards the end of this. As Hatchell and Jurgensen really have it separated, but Simmer not quite as close as he was before. He's still always been kind of third, but not quite as close as the other two. Hatchell got back in front, of course, of Jurgensen on that last run. That put him now in position where he's been leading this thing. But Jurgensen right back on the rear end of that car. Uh, Justice and Mains all over each other again. And Mains are probably the closest he's been for a while. Maine's definitely as close as he's been to Justice all night long as Justice got a little loose on corner exit that last time by. And we begin to inch our way towards the halfway point, not terribly far away. Six laps to go till we get halfway through this race. And it seems like this might be the time where Garrett Maines is starting to really figure this place out. Might have learned just enough from Derek Justice to maybe come away with the class lead if he can work his way around the 31 within the next few laps. I think that's important for him to really get done here as uh, he just wants to make sure he's in a position where he's not having to play second fiddle in this one. But can he hold it? We've not really seen him pass Justice yet. Justice has been running incredibly well in this race. And we've also got to remember Tyler Dalton isn't too far behind this. He's coming up quickly. The 19 is only a car away from those two. The gap is reasonably big, of course, but he's not out of sight of them. So he's maybe a second at the moment behind them. So he's an opportunity. But I think he needs a caution to really cement that. Could, could be the case, but it may differ as we continue on our way here at Dover. Flip through the back half of the top 10 very quickly just to see what's going on. Tyler Dalton's got a group behind him. He's the first car sort of in line with folks in tow. John Theodore's there. Sean Bounty, Renz Brown having a pretty good battle for ninth and 10th. Ryan Hill and Aaron Rodgers there too, but they're all relatively strung out. It's not quite the battle that we're seeing in the top five, especially between Hatchell and Jurgensen, because Jurgensen is giving absolutely no space between the eight and the three. No, he's really not at the moment, and he's definitely doing with this what he can do, of course. Hatchell is really being kept honest right now by Jurgensen. This has brought the 77 up, who's looking to the inside now. The three makes a move for second place into one and two forces the three up out of his groove but it might not be enough to have the inside ahead by the back stretch the three all oh, gets some wall there impact the three that's going to really impact Jurgensen's race i think a little bit of damage on the outside there may hurt him but this is benefiting Hanschel hugely look at that gap this is how negative running side by side is at dover it impacts you this much Hanschel just springboards into a massive lead here half a second there in a matter of a lap and it also brings those two trucks fighting for the Class C lead right into this battle for second and third, both overall and in Class B. But as they fight it out and they try and figure out who is going to be the one to try and challenge South Houseville next, we will turn our attention to tonight's iRacing Midway Race Break as we cross the halfway point. And as always, that's brought to you by iRacing, the world's leading online racing simulation. Developed for the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service, iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on virtual tracks all around the world. iRacing is home to a wide variety of officially sanctioned series, with racing from the Australian supercars over 
pretty big event on the mountain next weekend. The Cars Tour right here on the Pretty Elite Sports Network. IndyCar, IMSA, NASCAR, the World of Outlaws, and more. We'll go through the overall standings here and try and note where people are in Class B and Class C. Right now, Seth Hatchell is your leader, both overall and in Class B, over Nathan Jurgensen and Chris Samar. Jurgensen managed to get out in front of Samar for just a bit there, but they're still side by side trying to sort that one out. Meanwhile, back fourth overall, leader in Class C is Derek Justice. He's ahead of Garrett Maines by maybe about two or three car lengths. Maines currently fifth overall, second in Class Sixth overall belongs to the 08 of Michael Jeans, Class B driver, as are John Theodore, who runs in seventh, Rents Brown, who currently has eighth, and Sean Boundy in ninth. And then Tyler Dalton in a truck currently sits tenth at the moment. Yes, yeah, so it does at the moment, and that's going to be a good one for him there to kind of get through with that one. Tyler Dalton, he He's third place, but 10th place overall. There's a lot of traffic to get through, but the trucks really are going to be competitive. Tyler's not been quite as quick, I don't think, as some of the others. Some of the trucks go flying through here. Oh, the 32 set up the hill there. He is damaged, though. 27 of Theodore gets his way through there. He's moved up a couple of spots actually recently now. He's no longer kind of last in that group. Boundy and Brown are both behind him, so seeing a resurgence here from John Theodore. That's pretty work our way through the rest of the madness. David Shieldown is currently in 11th, Ryan Hill 12th, Aaron Rodgers 13th, Justin Patello in 14th, 15th. He's Reese Bayham, Brian Zimmerman is 16th, 17th is Xavier Schaffler, Derek Wando 18th. Those are all trucks until you get William Kemp, who's 19th and 10 laps down and also, I believe, done for the evening. He's pulled off the track and into the garage, as has Ryan Gemmel in 20th in a truck. Robert Sparhawk in a truck runs in the 21st position. Now he and Jose Mejia in 25th of the last two cars running on track. Everyone else behind the wall here. Sean Campos, Josh Bonwell, Gerald Campbell, Keith Motto, Blake Griffith, Tom Arano, Tyler King, Chris Carroll, Jeremy Watkins, and Adam Baker in that order. And that completes tonight's iRacing Midway Race Break. With over 80,000 drivers on the service and over 80 blazer scan tracks and cars to choose from, iRacing is the original esports racing game. For more information, visit iRacing.com today. As I have a feeling you might have been right, Rachel, about the damage to Jurgensen's number three machine because that car is not quite as good as it was some 15 laps ago when it was clean. And even though Chris Samard finally did clear the three machine, they're now both way back of Hatchel compared to where they were. It's almost a full second between the eight and the 77, and it's a solid 1.5 back to the three from the eight. He's all, he's closer to Justice and Mains than he is to Samard and Hatchel at this point. Yeah, that's going to be a big difference for them as well, and that's one thing he has to keep control of is that he needs to try and do what he can to move forwards here, but Simmer just... Uh, this I'm surprised that Simmons really pushed forwards here, but that fight really cost them both on Hatchell. And Justice and Mains are catching up now. That could be interesting if they can bring him out of this picture. Could be a fun one to sort through everything as Justice and Mains continue to pace everything, though. Got some good battles a little bit further back. Michael Jeans, John Theodore there together, and Rents Brown and Sean Boundy again together and have been using pretty much all of the racetrack no matter where they are as we see Theodore now don't underneath jeans and try and bring that 27 right along the edge of the apron to the side of the 08 machine got a good run off the corner and he might be side by side with jeans going into turn one yeah very much so there as he wants to make sure he can keep himself in a secure spot for this but Turn one is a brave place to do that one. It's probably uh, a bit more hairy. It's all Theodore here on jeans. In three and four. Theodore going to the low side, trying to get what he can out of this. Holds a good line. A little bit of wall there for jeans. Theodore gets the dive. Will he pull clear enough? He won't clear him entirely. So he's nearly clear now. Will he be enough to slide up? Not quite. He's just about clear. He's just going to be. Oh no, wasn't quite. Didn't want to risk that. Could have turned himself on the bumper. Shows the safe option a little bit lower now. We're very much securing three. 
He's got it this time. Theodore now well clear of Jeans, who will slide back into the clutches of Wrench Brown and Sean Boundy. And Brown will have his opportunity coming out of to this time by David Schildhouse also there. Sean Boundy got a really good run off the corner, though. Nearly got the wall, though, so it's going to kill the momentum. But now here comes Brown looking to the inside of the 08, who continues to slide back. Yeah, tries to get done what he can do, but the 08 just losing lots of ground here as he just tries to find himself a spot. In fact, loses positions now to Brown and Bundy, who are both going to slide through on this one. 20 of Shieldhouse, that speeding belt has really impacted him. He's right behind this group now. Last of the real kind of main contenders is all 24 catches a wall there. He's... Brown with the slightest piece of the fence. Not too much, though. In the meantime, though, Michael Garelia has a report from Pit Road. Yes, I've been uh, watching this battle for the lead as we've seen multiple battles and towards back in the pack. But between Hatchell and Savard up front, uh, I've been watching Savard's line compared to the rest of the field. And he's the highest I've seen most of our competitors today. Uh, Hatchell has been kind of based down on that bottom line, almost like the Kevin Harvick line, who, where you usually run the very bottom of the track around Dover, keep the momentum nice and even throughout the corner. As you see, Savard goes up to the middle of the corner, gets as high as he can in the middle of the corner, and it kind of diamonds it down off the corner to get that run to gain some momentum down the straightaways to catch up to Hatchell. He's been back and forth for some times, but he's been getting closer and closer to Hatchell as he's getting further into this run as we're working about lap 26 of this run right now. So interesting as you note the differences, especially in corner exit, which come with the way these drivers run. It's a much tighter exit for Hatchell, whereas Samar almost sort of runs down the hill and uh, manages to launch off the bank into the corner. Has a little bit straighter exit, I think, uh, than Hatchell would. Uh, and has been making decent time, in fairness. Last time by, it was within two one hundredths of a second between the leaders and Samard was actually the faster of the two. So uh, they're not terribly far off, actually rather a tenth. But no, a hundredth. No, I can, I can read correctly. So, uh, but in either case, uh, interesting to note that You've got multiple ways to run this racetrack and you know what you're doing and you can make up time. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the outright bottom. You think that the Harvick line that Michael mentioned is usually the one that you'd want to run around here. And traditionally, that's the fast way to get around. But Samar is showing us that it's not the only way to be quick here at Dover. No, not even close. It's definitely not remote. The only way to get through there. And there are plenty of options when it comes to that. I think he's found a nice option that works for him. And that's what's important, finding something that does it for his car, does it for how the racetrack is evolving right now. You can see the track really picking up a lot of rubber at the moment as the 20 goes down the track there. Now, Schildhouse getting incredibly loose there as he's actually regaining some spots here, looking like he's coming back from his uh, penalty, but he has to be careful to not get a slip up like that. Uh, the track has changed from what it was at the start, so it's definitely made things a bit more difficult for these guys, and we're seeing right now, if you look further up, Garrett Mains has dropped back from Justice, who is pursuing really hard now. They're getting late into those tyres, and it's really kind of slowing him down a lot. As Seth Hatchell continues to pace all of these drivers, but Samard's not terribly far away. Jurgensen though, is falling way, way, way off. It's three and a half seconds now, so the damage for that number three machine, I really do think, is playing out of his favor and out of his hands. The Justice and Mains have not really separated themselves, but Boundy's had a nice drive here. Brown has slipped back a little bit amongst this group of five, this Class B battle that's been pretty impressive the whole way through. They've been relatively bunched up and close together the whole of this green flag run as we are closing in on our longest green flag run of the night. Now, naturally, that probably means we're going to have a yellow in five laps, just with the way that I've managed to jinx the racing this evening. But uh, the B cars have been very close together. There's a lot more separation amongst the Class C trucks. They've been all over the place here in their race compared to what drivers in class B have been up to. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've definitely kept it spicy for tonight. And I'm kind of sad to see Tyler Dalton, the real competition for third place so far back, 11th overall there, with it being really a two-truck race for that field. Um, otherwise, the actual truck field is incredibly spread out. Most, if not all, of the trucks really not that close to each other which is kind of sad. Our biggest battle, of course, is in the B cars. This group from 10th overall up to about 6th. It's kind of two real packs. We've got, of course, Theodore Bundy and Shieldhouse. We've got Jeans and Brown there uh, in the back. So it's kind of unfortunate we're not seeing as much race from the trucks as we might have expected. 
think it might be better with them. Also, what, what kind of spicy are we working with when you mean spicy rates? Was it maybe like a peri peri spicy or something? I was thinking more mm, Masai. Oh, 24 loses the back end but controls it. Um, we're not going to get a caution, but he's lost a lot of track position. So Brown manages to save it and gather it up once again, but not before he falls off the back of that Class B group that had been together and falls behind Tyler Dalton and nearly behind the 55 of Ryan Hill, too. Just the 55's got that top side there. I don't necessarily know if that's the preferred group or not. It sort of depends on the line that you drive, but in either case, Brown gathers it back up. He's now 8th in Class 11th overall. Big checkup there on the racetrack as he pulls up in front of uh, Ryan Hill, which will not be as impressive for those. And then lost it again. He's really struggling with that car. The tires are overcut. Tires are shot. The problem is he's got plenty of fuel left to go. That's the issue. Only 42 laps on this set of tires for the 24 machine. So it will be a matter of tiptoeing all over the place for Rince Brown for the rest of this green flag run, however long it may go, unless he just decides that enough of it is enough and says that he needs tires and short pits in order to make sure that he's got rubber to work with. Because you see what happened to Rents on the replays on your screen here. And more than a few times managed to just get loose. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just a tricky position for that. And I think once you start to get loose, you psych yourself out of the race. And you're expecting it to happen, so you're a little bit less aggressive. As we return to the battle between Garrett Maines and Derek Justice, and Maines has managed to work his way around the 31 machine. So, not the first, uh, well, we've seen it a little bit here, but uh, Maines uh, managed to jump around the top side of Justice a few laps ago, and is now your leader in Class C. So, first change we've seen all night gives credence to the thought that I had earlier that uh, Maines has just sort of been watching and learning and learning and learning and figuring out the line as he progresses through this race and we work our way through the final 100 laps tonight. Yeah, very much so. And the final 100 laps, I think, is going to be the most telling part of this race. And they need to make sure they're in that sort of structured position where they can really push towards the end. We expect at least another stop here if we don't get to the caution. And as I jinx that most likely, but it's. <laughs> The caution will change the entire dynamic of this race. It brings everything back together. The separation, the more of it we see, will bring more chance for us to run to the end. We're lapping trucks and cars now, so that's majorly a factor. We see Mains getting through traffic. He's really separated. Oh, no, Mains has gotten past Justice. I think I must have missed that one. But Mains now running much, much higher up. Is Justice saving tires? Maybe saving tires, saving fuel. It was an easy pass that Mains made on the top side. It almost looked like Justice was sort of letting him go. So I wonder if Derek might have something up his sleeve and in his set of plans that we don't quite know about just yet. But in either case, it's allowed Garrett Mains to gap that 31 machine by about a second for the lead in Class C. So Mains will be getting to take control of it, at least for the time being. But again, we've still got plenty of time left to go. And the pit strategies that Michael Carilia called out are still available to these drivers. When you stretch it and go maybe 82, 83, 84 laps, and then go another 84 to wrap up the race. As it stands, could be very, very interesting to see how people play this out. Also, I, I think... <laughs> Big chat might have given us one of the best race reports I've seen. Uh, for those unaware, uh, I'm not quite sure why Vero Beach, Florida is listed as the hometown of Rince Brown on our graphics. I know for a fact that the answer to that question is not Vero Beach, Florida, but Woodland Hills, California. And as a Southern California native, Rince has a bit of a soft spot for a certain blue and white baseball team that's playing in the postseason tonight and getting word that one of our good friends, David Krikorian, and another Southern Californian has been feeding Rents updates. And <laughs> he might be wrecking, holding on to the edge of every single Dodgers play that's taking place <laughs> over the course of the evening. As the Dodgers are currently in a pretty good spot. Up six runs on the Nationals, working their way through the bottom of the or top of the sixth there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
Uh, people are getting a little bit side I think right now this is the tires that are nearly dead here people are trying to push this till we're at that kind of 80 to go window and they want to come down pit road so right now is the uh, the sideways festival I think I get a little slideways I suppose as we turn our attention to the 27 of John Theodore who is racing David Schildhouse for a position Yeah, going for it now as we got a lot of lapping going on and showed holding the position for now theodore not really able to make it happen so he's gonna have to wait also of note here forgot about that caution that happened some 40 50 laps ago and i totally borked my brain for a moment but michael grelia makes the point to us that if drivers were to split the end of this race and make one pit stop from that last yellow flag that pit stop would come in about 14 laps or so 68 laps and then 68 laps two of those runs would get you to the end so if you're trying to short pit that's probably when you want to do it otherwise we'll probably see people stay out till the full 70 or 80 laps and make a shorter run on that last run maybe press the tires a little bit more to try and gain some track position at the end of this is brown i think is in trouble i don't know i think engine trouble for the number 24 i wonder if he might have run into some sort of issue that we didn't note here and hit the inside retaining wall because he got too loose out of the corner. That's what happened. And that's what caused the engine damage as you see the replay on your screen. So big engine damage for the 24 rents round. And I have a feeling uh, that'll probably end his night. But if the Dodgers are on, I wonder if he was more distracted to begin with. Not often that you have baseball as a valid excuse for ruining your evening, but this is one of those rare cases. It is October postseason time after all. Yeah, it certainly is, and these guys are definitely getting pretty exhausted out on the racetrack right now. And that's one of those things that you tend to see makes a difference in these races. We've seen a lot of people making little silly mistakes right now, and that's partly due to repetition, repetition, repetition. It's been 168 runs around this track, and a lot of these guys are getting pretty tired. It's getting pretty familiar. Uh, Hanschel has a huge gap right now, three seconds over Simmet. Uh, Simmet himself two seconds over Jorgensen, so... This one really changing mains now has not a huge gap, but Justice really catching back up to him here. So we could be seeing that tire saving Justice has been doing paying off and will he get past him most likely. Justice beginning to pressure mains and the bounty Theodore Shieldhouse still together in that group of three. That's fourth, fifth, sixth in class B, sixth, seventh, eighth overall. Two, probably the two best battles on track to launch at the moment as mains continues to press on and Derek Justice is beginning to really, really put the pressure on as Shieldhouse managed to get around John Theodore out of four that last time by. Yeah, Theodore really trying uh, real hard right now to make places. He's pulled himself further upwards, but still finds himself really at the back of this pack of Xfinity cars. Shieldhouse has been recovering and he's trying to work here on Boundy, but a lot of time between him and any cars that could really make a difference here. In fact, he gets past Boundy, he'll be fourth. And Jurgensen's going to be really six, seven seconds up the racetrack. So it's really a battle of fourth place from this trio. And I, I think Boundy really, really wants to hold on to it. Right now, Shieldhouse is the one thinking he should be back up there. So Shieldhouse really displaying some talent on the racetrack to try and get himself back up into a decent finishing position. Especially when we consider that Chris Samar has just come down pit road. So what could be the first final stop of the night if this goes green the rest of the way? Hans started samar the first of the leaders to come down pit road for service on lap 172 now 173 of 250. yeah we're definitely into that window now of uh a stop being viable 34 is coming down for his now boundy is hitting pit road he's gonna blink for this one and we also saw the same thing happen i think from simmons so simmons on pit road getting his a little wide in the box, but it should be okay stop-wise. Hanschel and Jurgensen are probably going to have to respond to it. I have a feeling that you're probably right about that. So all eyes on when Hanschel and Jurgensen decide to come down. And the answer is not this lap. They're going to stay out more. So I imagine that Samard, should the cycle all the way through, will be in control of this race by a pretty decent amount of time. But Hanschel and Jurgensen will have the fresher tires, and they may be able to run the 77 down unless we get a yellow flag as Hansel now makes his entrance on the pit road and the second of our top three class B drivers comes in for what could be his final pit stop of the night. 
Yeah, that'll be quite telling here. Hatchell hits pit road. Jurgensen's probably going to blink this lap by. Otherwise, he will get left behind, I think. As uh, Justice still out on the racetrack for the trucks. Uh, Mains is there as well. Neither, I don't think, is in the last lap or so, I don't believe. Looking at their timing, no, they have not. So I think maybe another lap or two for those guys. Jurgensen still not pitting, so maybe a brave or foolhardy strategy here. I'm not sure, because you can lose a lot of time compared to brand new tires on old tires at Dover. That is a major error to go more than a couple more laps than anybody else. If someone pits and I'm in the lead, or kind of close to lead after maybe 80 laps, I'm pitting the next lap, because you will lose so much time. Look at his last lap, 25 dead. We'll take a look at the last lap for, where is it, Hatchell, when he actually gets a timed lap, which will be this time by. In fact, it won't be because he's, of course, running there. Simard will have a lap, 23, so that's two seconds of difference. The flip side to this, though, is that if the damage on Jorgensen's car is significant enough that he thinks that he doesn't have the pace to run down Hatchell or Chris Samara, then the alternative would be to try and stay out, see if you can get a yellow flag, and maybe trap them a lap down and put them in big-time trouble. That, honestly, that might be the best way to go about it if you don't think you've got the car to actually win the race on speed alone. So I wonder if that might be what's going through Jorgensen's head at this point. As Garrett Maines comes down pit road for service, and he's the first of the class C drivers, and with some damage, too, don't quite know what happened to the one machine. Yeah, that's definitely going to be something that we'll be keeping an eye on for this one. Of course, Maines gets himself through pit road there, as Justice will likely respond, I'm thinking here. Justice is on pit road now, so it's, as uh, Jurgens is still out. When are you coming in, dude? Jürgensen You're kind of pushing this one here a lot. Pushing it a lot, but also a note here, I didn't get a chance to see it underneath that pit cycle. The Garrett Mains bounces off the wall on the exit of turn two and then bounced off of Justice a little bit. I don't think James, Justice don't mean to break point. you up here, but look at this. The 34, who has already pitted, flew past Jürgensen. Jürgensen's making a serious tactical error, hoping to run, I think, later on this run and blast it to the end. I don't think that's going to help him. I don't think it's a blast in the end. I think he's trying to get the yellow. But in either case, Mains caught the wall in two and got a significant amount of damage, at least a decent amount there, to the left side in particular, left front of that number one machine, and had to come in, and I would imagine got a little bit of it fixed up. But as it stands, because he managed to come in before Derek Justice, he's got that 31 by a pretty good margin. How about somewhere in the ballpark of three or four seconds so that's what justice is going to have to work with to try and run down the one machine yeah absolutely i think that's going to be an important one to try and focus on here as justin going to work himself through this one he is close but not going to be close enough right now he's got a big advantage i'm still seeing the out on the racetrack this is this is confounding me i don't know what to really think with this one Jurgensen stays out. David Schildhaus is on pit road at this time. Justin Patello is the only other driver uh, a little bit further back of this that has not come down pit road for service yet. So Samard has already pitted everybody and is in control of this. He's got a gap of about a second or actually, ah, yeah, about a second over Seth Hatchell. And so not too much for Samard. And I, I wonder if Hatchell might take advantage of the fact that he's got 10 lap pressure tire or three lap pressure tires and maybe work his way around the 77 at some point in the meantime uh, Justin Pacello Nathan Jurgensen Michael Jeans Aaron Rodgers your four drivers who are waiting on to come down pit road and get what could be their last pit stop if we say green the rest of the way David Schildhaus with another speeding penalty as well to yellow flag oh, what a big call by Jurgensen Big, big call. There's Michael Jeans ends up in trouble. And the old tires finally got to the 08, I believe. He just got loose on corner exit and ends up looping it into the outside retaining wall. Nearly got clipped by Derek Justice. It was a very scary moment for the 31. But Jeans goes around, ends up in trouble. And does Nathan Jurgensen, after you absolutely slated the strategy, Rachel, does he ever look like a genius now for staying out and getting the yellow flag that he desperately, desperately needed to stay in this race? 
I don't think it's necessarily something that's wrong with me slating the strategy. The strategy was flawed, and I'll tell you why. You can't guarantee a caution, especially late in a race when you've got maybe 60, 70 laps to go, and you're hoping for a caution on a pit cycle. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, a pit cycle is a good opportunity for it. However, there have been other pit cycles that have gone completely green. It's not the first time. There have been green races at Dover. And after such a long green flag run, to think, oh, there'll be a caution soon. I'm going to risk this. Oh, man, that's, that's not a strategy. That's a gamble. That was a gamble that was pure 50-50. Flip a coin and hope. It could have gone either way. I'm afraid that's luck, not strategy. And to be fair, it did pay all for him, though. And we do have a casino here on the property at Dover International Speedway, too. So I wonder if we... Uh, maybe maybe tried to figure things out that way and get a little bit of luck. But as Jorgensen and company come down for service, it is time to call upon a certain feathered friend who uh, does like this place a good bit. He manages to hang out near the coastline and just soak up some of the beach rays. But it's time for him to get back to work. So, Rachel, if you would please do us the honor. I'm afraid you're going to have to because I never got that document. Whoopsie! Oh, I have to carry you the chuck then? Okay, fine. I guess I'll be the one to carry you the chuck as we bring you tonight's podium esports trivia question. And as always, a reminder of the rules before we. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's a better idea. Go ahead. Uh, let's just go with a better idea. I could, I could keep the chuck, and I tried to keep the chuck. The reality, though, is that I'm just not all that good at it, and we have someone that's better at it. So, uh, David, since we're under yellow flag, it gives you a very convenient opportunity to go pull out our feathered friend and if you would please do us the honor. Well, hopefully I can do this better than getting down pit road because I just sped again, but uh, well, for the Monster Mile edition, let's cue the Chuck. That's better. That's much, much better. Much, much better. I, I cannot compete, clearly. Yeah. David Schildhouse <laughs> would be the best Chuck cure we will ever see, I think, just about. But in either case, reminder of the rules before we play this evening. First and foremost, that employees and contractors are putting up eSports LSC or an eligible to participate. And second, suddenly the first response from participants will be counted. You get one response per person per broadcast, and any responses after the first will be deleted from chat. So think before you speak. I can think of one other race in which the precedent that was followed today was set. And that may be a good hint. If you know your Daytona International Speedway history, it might help you with tonight's trivia question. Because what we want to know is the color of the trophy that was given to the winner of today's race at Dover. The color of the trophy. Someone smart will probably come in and jump on this and get it quick. And somebody will probably very quickly earn Chuck's undying love and affection. But if you need a hint... Daytona pulled a very similar move in a similar race not too terribly long ago, and I'll admit I'm still very salty about said race. Uh, if you paid attention here on the Pony V Sports Network, it shouldn't well, be all that hard to figure out why. But the color of the trophy from today's race at Dover, that is tonight's Chuck the Duck Pony V Sports trivia question. Looks like we're getting everybody lined up for the restart here. Jorgensen somehow some way it's going to be way out in front of all this madness as they begin to line everybody back up as the caution will be extended to get everybody lined up once again so we'll get the one to go again next time and that should give us a green flag i believe on that 191 of 250 and jorgensen and rogers how lucky are they they get to stay out get the yellow flag and there'll be one and two with the freshest tires of anyone in this field when we go back to green flag racing if anyone ends up in trouble here now, i think of seth hansel sean boundy who decided not to come down pit road for service and they've got the oldest tires in this field outright at 14 and 16 laps chris samara decided to can his strategy and come get four tires and fuel once again so he's got fresh rubber right in line with jurgensen and rogers but He's also third overall, second in class. So a little bit of work for the 72 to do. 
Uh, Looking forward to an exciting well, restart on this one, actually, James. It's going to be uh, pretty dicey here with maybe 60 laps to go now. I think this is going to make this a much different race. We're going to see a couple more cautions, I think, in this one with everyone packed up and only 60 to go on the tyres. They're going to go knowing there'll be one more caution, so they're going to burn everything here, expecting 30 laps or less on a run. We are going to see guaranteed one more caution at this point, I think, so they're going to know that. They're going to race hard and guarantee that caution. So the yellow has been extended one more time, so we're still trying to sort out timing and scoring here and figure out who needs to be where as we continue on in this race. Also of note, we do have a winner for the trivia question. And how about our Canadian Irish, Irish Canadian? He'll probably have a very particular way to say it, but Kilo Martin Amstriga with the correct answer. It was a golden trophy. Golden miles. Golden miles. So congratulations to Keelan on getting tonight's trivia question correct and earning Chuck's undying love and affection. We look forward for everybody to participate. Uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe our friends at the Gaming Drift Series might have a trivia question of their own when they get to it because they are next up here on the Podium Esports Network is the Gaming Drift. So the Gaming Drift Series is next up here on the Podium Esports Network. They will take care of action from Autopolis and they will go this Saturday, October 12, 3.30 p.m. Eastern uh, before uh, we take an off week here in the middle of the year and then get back at it two weeks from tonight. It is this same iRacers Lounge podcast Oval Series from Chicagoland Speedway. And that'll be 8.30 p.m. Sunday, October 20th. A lot of fun from that mile on a half track. So many different lines you can run through the corners there and that art back straight away. Just changing the way that you approach racing there. Next time you'll see the Sound Car Challenge Series is going to be end of the month, Halloween weekend, October 27th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. It will be the Stock Car Challenge Series powered by iRacing iFlag at the Indy Course at Brands Hatch, the short track, per se, on the calendar there. A very short road course, very entertaining road course, and I imagine that if the Cup Cars can put on a show anything like what the BTCC does every time they run that every year, Rachel, we are going to be in for a very, very big treat. Yeah, we certainly, certainly are looking forward to seeing how that one plays forwards and looking forward to a very intense race so I'm hearing from race control that they're having a few issues sorting out the trucks and trying to get everyone waved around and in the proper spot so they're just fixing time again scoring up and getting everybody back on the laps that they need to be on and then we'll go back green flag racing some way somehow so We'll take care of all of the green flag business, but we'll remind you that all those events that we just talked about, and you can find them right here on twitch.tv forward slash podium esports, the 24 7 home of the podium esports network. We'll go down to Michael Corelli to see if he can tell us a little bit more on what's causing this extended yellow flag and you know, why we're seeing the yellow flag pop out a few more times as we approach lap 200. Yeah, so this is just an issue with the two separate classes between the Xfinity cars and the Camping World truck cars. Um, there's an issue where the system had the truck field with Garrett Mains there, Justice, Just Botello, and most of the entire field behind them a lap down to the overall leader, which was the three of Nathan Jurgensen, and not a lap down compared to the 15 of Aaron Rodgers. So since he was since the the trucks were even on the same lap with the 15 of Ed Rogers, they're being waved around and they're going back on the same lap. So they're being waved around compared to the overall leader. I uh, said so the class leader instead of the overall leader. So the trucks will get back on the same lap as the 15 of Aaron Rogers. What are the weird quirks of racing, multi-class racing that uh, even iRacing can't quite handle properly, so it's a made or move that race control has to put together in order to figure things out. But it looks like most of those chunks were way past the pace car here within the last 30 seconds or so, and I suspect that you know, we're not terribly far removed from the green flag, which will come a little bit later than we'd like, but uh, we'll see if we can nail this down and get the one to go this time by 
And it looks like lights should, in fact, go out this time. Looks like everybody has been waved by that needs to be waved by. Getting ready for this restart. It's hopefully going to be an exciting one. We're definitely winding the laps down now here and bringing ourselves well into a they're going to charge for it and crash window here. So <laughs> looking forward to a very big... Mm -hmm. As the lights are indeed off on the pace car and we go back to green flag racing this time by it'll be lap 195 and 250 so 55 to go here Nathan Jurgensen will be your race leader and then Aaron Rodgers and then Chris Savard, Seth Hatzel, Sean Bounty, Garrett Maines, Derek Justice, Justin Pacello, Tyler Dalton, Ryan Hill your overall top 10, Jurgensen, Savard, Hatzel, Bounty in the B cars, Maines, Justice, Pacello, Dalton, Hill in the Class C trucks and then Reese Bayham, John Theodore, David Schildhouse, David Shelford, Brian Zimmerman, Michael Jeans, Derek Wyandotte. Your car is on track at the moment. And a few more. Robert Sparhawk, Jose Mejia also running on track. But we've whittled the field down pretty well. Started with 32, now down to 19 cars on track. So attrition has definitely played into this a bit. But we're going to get the chance to go green flag racing once again. Waiting and waiting and waiting as we wait to see how it goes. And they all take off once again. Green flag finally does pop back out. And Jurgensen got a good jump ahead of Aaron Rodgers. So he'll go to the point. Rodgers to second. Samarin and Hatchell in third and fourth. But they're more concerned about trying to run down the three machine. They just want to make sure they get around the 15 pretty quickly. Samarin won't have any issue with it, though. He'll go down to the bottom. Looks like Hatchell will try and follow in line. Theodore in the meantime has cleared everybody else. He's next in line. Good restart for the 27 machine. As the 77 will get down to the bottom of the 15. And now here comes Hatchell. So those three now clear off the chase. Nathan Jurgensen just about. Hatchell having a little bit more trouble. And actually was clear and then had to step back a little bit. So the 15 not exactly helping out the 8 machine here. As Hatchell continues to push on and get back up to the rear bumper of Samard. But that cost him about two or three car lengths. And Jurgensen now will have to try and fight off the number 77. Oh, big slap for the 34 into the outside wall. Then in with the three wide for a moment as uh, the one here of Maine trying to hold the lead of the truck series is not going to last long. Here comes the 31 car, or truck, I should say, of J up the inside now into three. Of course, this is for the lead of the truck class. And he's got the inside line there, pushing it hard. Aaron Rodgers is leading. Actually, I was incorrect there for a moment. This is for second place. Rodgers up at the high side. They're actually gaining on him. So this will be a pretty short lead, I expect, as here comes that. 31 got through there. Nice and easy one and two. And ahead of them, it's going to be Shieldhouse. I believe that that is 20. Indeed it is. Although I think Shieldhouse is down a lap at this as point. Is John yes, Theodore. he is. Yeah. That, that group Those guys are not for position. Yeah. Trying to get back to the lead lap, but Justice and Mains are racing for position with Aaron Rodgers. Shieldhouse will duck to the bottom and clear Rodgers. So now you've got the top three in the truck series all in a line, and Justice and Mains have been eating up the margin that Rodgers has. But Rodgers is one of the toughest drivers to pass in this iRacers Lounge podcast oval series, and this will be his opportunity to make the rear bumper of the 15 as wide as he possibly can because this is his best shot to win the race. If anyone of Mains or Justice gets past the 15, I don't know if he's going to have a chance, and I don't even know if the 15 is going to have a chance to fight it off. He'll go and defend from the top side, see if he can pinch the 31 down, make sure that Justice can't get the run off the corner. But Justice did a nice job of staying alongside Rogers down the straightaway, and it might not be too long before the 31 just blasts by the 15 and makes quick work of this battle for the lead. Oh, he's getting tight there. As uh, 31 and 15 got super close, maybe a little bit of a brush. He's making it work at the moment. It's 27 and the 20 fight. 20 had to back out there. It's 27 cut down on him, but 20 holds up the inside line there. We'll take that position from Theodore. Is trying to, which of course is the battle for. Uh, uh, well, uh, let me just brain this one real quick. That's going to be three for fifth place, of course, in the Xfinity class. A lot of uh, those guys out of contention after incidents, of course. Look at how much this fight's bottling up the truck lead, though, here. Is the 31 trying to find a way through here? Theodore's going to be forced to the top side as Rogers is going to try and do what he can to hold second place here from a charging 
Garrett Mains, but our front Derek Justice once again leading this thing as we cross the 200 marker. It's going to be less than 50 to go now, and it's going to get tight. Justice with the absolute best thing in the world that he could possibly see. Traffic behind to block Garrett Mains, who has been his nemesis in this race all night long. And now Mains all over the place to try and work around that 15 of Aaron Rodgers. I would not be surprised to see a chrome horn or some sort of contact between these two at some point. Rodgers trying to defend that spot. Mains recognizing that if he doesn't get away from the 15 now, it's only going to allow Derek Justice the opportunity to open up what is already about a half a second gap to those two even more. And it could end up going to the point where Mains doesn't have enough time to run Justice back down. Yeah, I think that's going to definitely be an interesting factor in this thing, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Things have changed a lot in, in that number of laps, especially if we do that, see that next caution, which I'm still thinking is going to happen. So that one's still on the car. Now front, Jorgensen got a huge, huge gap here. Simmons in second place, and well, Hatchell's not even in the same picture. He is three seconds back from the lead. I'm surprised about that. I pegged Hatchell uh, for the win of this thing, but uh, Jorgensen was either him or, it was, or Hatchell, sorry, for a toss-up, but... I was expecting actual to be a little bit further forward. This isn't like his racing. It's the fact that he's got about 10, 15 lap older tires on that eight machine than Jurgensen and Samar do. That's the difference. Jurgensen and Samar both completed their 19th and 20th laps on this set of tires. Hatchell's got 32 on his, and that 10 lap difference, I think, is almost exclusively responsible for the difference in speeds. He's down about a tenth and a half per lap compared to Jurgensen and Simard. So it's not like Hatchell doesn't have the racecraft, but you've got older tires, you just wanted the pace. And I almost think that Hatchell's going to need a late yellow and some fresh rubber in order to make a move to the front happen again. As Justice is way out in front, he's gotten such a benefit from this battle between Theodore, who's a lot down, and then Rogers and Mays. Garrett Mays has absolutely nowhere to go at this point. He is trying to fight off Aaron Rodgers and nothing more because Justice is gone. It's a second and a half already between the 31 and the 15. Yeah, it really is. And that's going to be one that I think plays with us to the end of this thing. Maine's really desperate for an opportunity here. But Rogers has been playing this one very well. He's really been putting himself in exactly the spot he I'm doing a nice job of it. Is Aaron Rodgers? Is, oh, how loose did Garrett Maines get that last time by coming out of turn four? Too much throttle on corner exit. And he nearly shut himself down into the inside retaining wall, but Rodgers didn't get through turn two all that well that last time by. So uh, sort of trading slips and slides here as we begin to hit the point where you start to see the tires fall off. It's been pretty consistent all night that once you get to about the 30 lap mark, you begin to see these tires really lose their grip and these drivers really begin to struggle to get around this place. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that's kind of a cliff face we might hit if they don't get this at the stop. But if we do get another uh, caution, will people pit? That's the real question. Will we get that restart with old tires, which we've not really seen all race, where we're going to have major drama, which leads to a chain of them. But uh, it's a tough one to call. This could go green to the end, uh, but I've got a feeling it'll still happen. I think you have to pit. I'm not necessarily certain if you've got the option, to be fair. It's, it's so, so critical to have fresh rubber on these cars, and you're seeing it, I think, best exemplified by Seth Hansel, without question, who has been one of the fastest cars all night. And here he is, he's now down two tenths compared to the leaders, and he's about to lose an on-track position to David Schildhouse. Though Schildhouse is racing to get himself back on the lead lap. He's the first car one lap down, both overall and in Class B. So not really a race there, but Schildhouse has eight laps fresher tires than this eight machine, and you'll be able to see the difference in speeds as Schildhouse, I think, lightly works his way around the eight car over the next five to 10 laps or so. Yeah, for certain, and I think that's one thing they're going to be focusing on trying to do here, but he's in a good spot to try and do that. Shieldhouse isn't on the same lap, so it's really just for kind of bragging right at this point to pass Hatchell, but uh, it'd be good if he could put himself back in the lead lap. I just don't think it'll have a real impact yet other than maybe not the Bounty, but Bounty's too far. This Bounty continues to race way, way off on his lonesome to save for Justin Patello, who's right in front of him in a Patello's had a tough night, uh, just got caught up in that very, very early incident 
about land two or three or so, and it's it just hasn't gone all that well for him. But to his credit, he has trucked on and stayed in the game, and he now sits in 10th overall and currently in seventh in class. And I think, interestingly enough, just with the way this panned out and with the way that all the stops happened and the way that yellow flag came out right in the middle of that pit stop cycle and the last time by, you've got somewhere in the ballpark of seven of the top 11 from Class C when it's been the B-Class cars and the Class B machines that have had the speed all night. So there's an interesting little twist to this that may or may not get sorted out. I think we'll need another yellow flag in order to get everything shaped up. Yeah, definitely. I think that's going to be involved in this one. Oh, Bain's making a move now on 15 of Rock. Dives into the inside in three and four. Rogers though gets the drag out of the higher line. Better groove off turn four actually as being where Rogers was, so he manages to maintain that position as once again means dives it in here, but the gap they're causing by racing like this is just gonna eat it up. Three seconds to justice, who's just demolished him. Oh, gets him sideways. Keeps it up there, but Tyler Dalton's right on top of them here. So Dalton be brought into this fight now. Three-way battle. So Dalton comes in here, and I want to look back at this and see. Yeah, it looks like Maine's just got a little bit tight on corner exit. Wasn't sure if Rogers changed line at all, but there was absolutely no movement from the 15. That was all on the one of Maine to get into the 15, make that little bit of contact. And you're right, it has brought Tyler Dalton into this battle. So uh, this, this is a nightmare scenario for Garrett Maine, who has been really the only other truck in this field that's had the pace to keep up with the 31 of Derek Justice. What it matters the most as we come down to the final 30 laps of this race, he's trapped behind Aaron Rodgers, who nailed the pit strategy, got the lucky yellow that he needed along with Nathan Jurgensen, and has managed to keep up the track position with the rubber he's got underneath that truck at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, well, we'll have to see how it does play, but... Rogers doing a phenomenal job here of maintaining his spot in second place here. Although he's got two charging trucks behind him who definitely disagree with how that one's going. Simmet though, he's pulling in the gap now to Jurgensen. So that's something I'm really excited to see if we're going to battle towards the end of this thing as uh, possibly 77 looking to try and bring the win or bring the f Oh, as he bins it big and that might bring out our caution. Yes, it will. Oh, well, oh see, my no. God. Somehow, what? some way, no what? yellow flag on that. I don't, I really don't know how. I really don't <laughs> know how. The somehow. gap, he had, he had enough of a gap over the guys behind him. So when he spun, by the time he was back on the track or by the time his cars caught up to him. Yeah, by the time the cars caught up to him, he was facing forwards. So <laughs> you spin me right around, baby, right around, but not in time for the flag to notice like a record indeed but he was down on the apron and didn't come back up into the racing surface and that i suspect is why it didn't trigger the yellow flag from i racing it absolutely would have in most cases and at most tracks but dover with the big enough gap between the top and the bottom of the racetrack on the straightaways means that chris Simard can loop it and spin it and tear up his machine and drop back to third in class and eighth overall but will stay green flag racing and now it's nathan jurgensen all on his own by about four seconds over seth Hansel. and uh, I, I don't even know if you go hit the casino tonight if this stays green the rest of the way and he maintains the mistakes because jurgensen looked dead to rights halfway through this race when he got the wall didn't get any sort of break whatsoever had to spend some time on pit road to fix the damage when he got his lucky yellow but he got lucky in the right spot, got the yellow he needed to save his race, and all of a sudden it's turned the whole night completely around for the three machine, and he's just about on cruise control at the front of this. Yeah, it really is, and uh, Simmons is wrecked here as 34 is going to pass through that change the entire race there, because this now has uh, things all over the place. Oh, Main's got a big slice of wall there. Mains just goes straight at the track here. As oh, 19 got some wall, and the one went to the wall after him in sympathy. It was in front of him, and that's just led Rogers with a big, big window here. As yeah, Mains picked up some front end damage on that one. He got a big slap, rear end damage for Dalton, which could make him pretty loose. Derek Justice just sitting and laughing at this point as he, he, he's dusted everybody in Class C, but. It's turned into a really great battle for second in Class C as Rogers gets a little bit loose on corner exit and 
Maines of Dalton have all run into the wall, trying to run down the 15 again. And uh, Maines, I imagine, has to be incredibly frustrated. Just ha doesn't quite have the speed to get around the 15 machine. And I I'm I'm waiting for contact between two of those three. Uh, it, it feels like an inevitability at this point, just with the way this has panned out. Yeah, it really is. Honestly, <laughs> inevitability is something we don't, well, we try to avoid, but I think it's likely whether or not we'll see it is a different matter because these guys are going to prove me wrong here by being all clean, which is annoying. I want to caution. I want to stack these guys up and go for this. We had a one, you know, a single file restart last time, which kind of separated everything out really fast. I want a nice, great big pack. Two wide restart. Too late for everyone to pit. It's going to be carnage. Pure carnage, and I can't wait. Please, Rack. In the meantime, though, Aaron Rodgers absolutely with one of the best drives of his season so far as Mainz gets underneath them, and maybe this is the time where the one finally gets enough momentum to clear the 15, but credit to him. I don't think that Rodgers has had the pace of Justice or Mainz at all tonight, but in this run, he's used the fresh tires that he got because he came in on the same cycle with Nathan Jurgensen. Those two stayed out and hoped for a caution and then got it. And he just hasn't gone anywhere. He's managed to keep pretty much everybody safe for justice at bay and has held the track position. He, I think, restarted second. He's fourth overall. He's second in class. It's a really, really good run for the 15 machine in the closing stages of this race. Yeah, it really is. And I think we're looking forward to seeing how that does actually unfold. But now the 15 has had a phenomenal run here as... Uh, Mains is going for it again whether or not he'll make it succeed as he's picked up some front left damage too where from i'm not quite sure but come on 15 you've got this one hold the top line you can do it if he just dives down a little bit more but Mains is pulling on him a little bit more here as he goes back for the shot again as oh it gets tight there a little bit of tap of course the line Mains will lead into the corner but he's definitely going for it as Rogers now dives it in deep, and now he's the one on the bottom to try and get around the one machine of Garrett Maines, but just not enough speed in that 15 machine that Maines on lap 233 finally clears the number 15 machine of Aaron Rodgers. He had wanted that one for a bit. The problem now is that the tires are gone, the tires are shot, and he's got 18 laps to try and run down a six and a half second gap to the 31 of Derek Johnson. Yeah, it really is, and Justice has just flown away. Uh, yep. <laughs> I think at this point, Justice has been served unless he crashes that car because he is uh, flying away into the distance. He's just completely gone away from it as I'm getting booed from the production booth. And you know what? I don't care. I said I was going to say it, and I did. Yeah, Justice is swift. That's another one. You can have that one too. I've got plenty. Oh, Here we go. David this is about to get good, Oh, okay. So Rachel, can we pull him up and thank him, please? Can we but... pull him up and thank him? I've been waiting for this for a while. Oh, we have got 15 to go. This is going to be a spicy. Well, all, all the strategy. Lost the back end. You, you just throw it out the window, and it, it's the same story we've seen out of turn two tonight. Instead of people getting tight off the corner, they're just getting loose off the corner, and that's what happened to Shieldhouse. But. As Rachel pointed out, it is going to be probably a 10-lap shootout. You imagine everyone will come down for service, and we'll see if they extend this. I imagine we may end up in a green-white checker territory because I think there are going to be a few drivers that end up getting back on the lead lap as a result of this. So it's, it's going to be... It's going to be a wild one, to say the least. And now Garrett Maines finally gets to be behind Derek Justice and gets a crank at him. And uh, it's your Justice in particular. You had the whole thing bagged, and now you have to deal with this again? <laughs> oh, this is, <laughs> this is about to get good. Some guys coming for tires here, but uh, yeah, this is definitely one of those points where it's like, uh oh, spaghetti -o. A lot of people coming for tires, but a lot of people, well, actually, the lead lap cars, I think, are all coming for tires here. There's, there's no reason not to. This is when you really want to get some some tires on the car because uh you're gonna have to race your life here especially with the top group from the trucks have come on to pit road and uh, let me just check this yes every one of the top lead lap trucks have gone on to uh pit road here so they're gonna come back out in the running order which is gonna get spicy 
Jurgensen's pitted, Hatchell's pitted as well. Boundy and Simard is well screwed. As uh, Theodore, we think, has stayed out now. Theodore, I think, was a roll around, so this is going to be good, boys and girls. Ladies, gentlemen, and Chevrolet fans, we're about to see a fantastic race. I have no idea what to expect, but I can tell you that tonight's broadcast of the iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series is brought to you by SK Sim Racing. SK Sim Racing specializes in computer components and electronic peripheral devices. If you're looking for something specific to boost your rig, SK Sim Racing is the first place to look. For more information, visit them at skSimgear.com. We'll also remind you that if your brand or business is interested in partnering with Podium Esports, like SK Sim Racing or the iRacers Lounge Podcast, there's more space available for you. Podium Esports is a plan for every budget and can custom tailor solutions to suit your business or brand's needs best. For more information on the wide variety of partnership possibilities, send an email to admin at podiumesports.com. Well, this is going to be a very, very, very interesting restart, and I am looking forward to every moment of it, as uh, we have a number of cars who have stayed out, I believe here, unless they're going to get waved around in a moment, I'm not sure, I think they'll get waved on the one to go, so that will be a thing, yeah, these are all wave around cars, uh, Shieldhouse was hoping to be one of them, I think, until he bonked his motor into the inside wall, um, he is still one lap down, which is unfortunate, but... If we have another caution, he's good because he's the one lap down car. So he's got that in his favor. But right now, I'm looking forward to this truck race. We've got the top four trucks in, next to each other in two rows. And we're going to have one of the craziest restarts we've seen this whole race. What's not to love? All valid points. But we have an Ask the Booth question from Michael Baldessek, the Ask the Booth specialist. You can use the hashtag Ask the Booth in chat if you want us to talk a little bit about ourselves as we prepare for what could be the final restart of the evening but michael asks what are your three favorite moments in the sim racing either driving or commentating and i will make it very quick because we've gotten the one to go signal uh, it was winning the recruitment race at iowa and then the finishes at texas in the trucks and then uh, both daytona finishes in the trucks too uh, and i'll add a fourth and andrew fayash's run at the title uh, in the elite series is my favorite moments rachel quickly very quickly, my favorite moments was locking out pole with the safety lap and also taking flag to flag victory in the Blank Pen Enduro Series in the Mercedes at Sonoma. My absolute favorite road moment, winning at Charlotte, my first ever truck race, an oval win full stop for that. And also my first iris in commentary for 24 hours, which was the race spot, 24 hours of, of, of uh, spa. So there we go, my top three moments, awesome stuff. Let's get to this restart. This is going to be electric. Coming on 240, 250, they take off very, very early. Jurgensen didn't wait at all. Your leader in Class B, Mains has jumped to the front in Class C, and it's going to be all on there on Justice to try and run him back down. Hatchell, though, has got one mission. Go get Nathan Jurgensen. Meanwhile, there it goes. G Mains, I almost said Justice, but uh, Mains managed to jump right in front of the 31 to block and make sure he couldn't get the race lead as they come through the final 10 laps. Oh, this is going to be a big spicy one here. Of course, we've got Hatchell and Jurgensen here. We're going to fight it out for the B Series leaders. Here comes Justice at the end. Can Justice be denied? No, it cannot. And he gets through now. Leads that Truck Series here. So it's 1 2 Xfinity, 1 2 Truck Series, your top four cars. And this is going to get crazy here as Hatchell is digging in this one. I called him being one of the ones that might win this thing, and he's going to have a real shot at this now, as we are well inside now. Ten to go. Going to be eight. This he had no chance some ten laps ago before this yellow flag, and all of a sudden he's right on the rear bumper of that number three machine in the final ten laps of this race and leaving absolutely no room for the three to make a mistake. Meanwhile, Justice was able to get clear of mains, dispatch him easily, and is now out ahead by maybe three, four, five truck lengths, and I think the damage on the one might be playing into that just a bit. So all eyes on the relatively clean cars of Hansel and Jurgensen, or maybe Justice himself. He's got enough pace that he may contend for the overall win in a truck, which would be something here at Dover, but that I think would require Jurgensen He's got a shot. to get together as we've got just over five laps to go. 
I think he's got a real shot to actually achieve that. He's coming right up on those two now. He is digging for this thing, pulling on Garrett Mains. The gap is opening at 1.3 sec, uh, right, nearly a second now for those. But he is digging towards Hanschel and Jurgensen here. Uh, last time by, we got a... I'll just check this lap as he come across the line. Just his lap last lap was a 23.1. Hatchell was a 23.05. So they're not that far off. Their lap times have been almost... A Maybe a little bit more speed out of the class three cars, but it's all eyes on Jenkinson and Hatchell at the front of the field. Five to go when they cross the stripe, this time by. And Jurgensen started to gap Hatchell just a little bit. Maybe another ish car length. A slight car length, although Hatchell might be bringing it back here just a little bit. Oh, and then he gets the wall. There it is. Hatchell got the wall, overdrove corner exit out of turn two. And Nathan Jurgensen might have just gotten a free pass to victory if he could keep it clean for the final four laps of this race. That might be the golden ticket he needed in this one, as it's not over till the fat lady sings, and if she sings any sooner, we could be in some really dangerous territory, but as it stands, Jurgensen has to keep it clean. He has everything he needs for this one. Derek Justice definitely has it clean, but Theodore right now is backing out here with the 34 machine of Boundy. He's going to clear on the high side. He's going to put behind Rogers now, which won't be for position, of course, but it will be for track position. As he's going to get underneath him now, but Rogers goes up and out of the way. No problem there. Bringing the 55 with them. Ryan Hill is for position, however, so he might want to be watching out for that. Really good run for Theodore right here at the end. He's got third in class at the moment with that pass on Boundy, so he could come away with a podium spot in class. Maybe a little bit more if he could run down Mains, who doesn't have anything for justice. It's a second and a half as we are now down to the final lap and a half of this race and Nathan Jurgensen somehow some way might be able to come away with the luckiest of pit calls if he can make it one more lap white flag again. oh he's gonna get a turn maybe he's gonna get tired we got a problem there with Rogers and we're gonna have will green white checker or is no, this over? flag yet we're gonna go to the white end here. Nathan Jurgensen is in good shape makes it through three makes it through four he might as well just take all the gold on that car take it to the casino and gamble everything because the luck pays off and nathan jurgensen wins tonight's iRacers lounge podcast oval series race from dover international speedway and he needed the luck too he got himself into the fence earlier in the race and didn't have the speed of Hatchell or Samarin, but got the yellow flag at the perfect time, got back on cycle with everybody in the lead, took advantage of the track position, and held on the rest of the way to pick up his first win in this 2019 iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series season. Derek Justice to but the surprise of very few people brings the 31 home P1 and gets the victory in Class C as they burn it down together on the front stretch. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic one from both of those guys. They really kicked it in this one, but crazy, crazy wreck there at the end. I just like to take a quick look back at that. If we can get a replay on our screens from that literally across the line moment there. And it was on lap 249 for them. And it was contact with the 34 machine there of Boundy. As 35 gets in the back of 34, they get three wide, and three wide wasn't enough room as he tips the 15. Rogers goes down, big pinata moment, spinning around, beaten, hit by a couple of other vehicles as that absolutely demolished about three cars there. That bounty and Bounty had just the biggest, biggest mess to deal with. As you can see, they were racing pretty closely as they came through turn two and down the back straight away, and then it all just got wild coming out of four. He had a big bunch of momentum, was trying to go somewhere with it, ended up getting in a bounty, then tried to go to the top side and just didn't have enough room to finish off the move and ended up getting into the 15. The 34 gets pile driven there. I can't quite tell who that is that got into him, but just absolutely drilled into the side. Let's see if we can... You know, Reese Bayham, as I look back on it, yeah, had, didn't have anywhere to go. Bounty was a pinwheel across the center of the... Well was just sort of sliding up and came right into the lane of the 34. And then Chris Savard and Tyler Dalton ended up benefiting from that one a lot because those two ended up jumping up a good bit in the standings. They cleared about three or four drivers and actually came away with some pretty solid finishes. I think 
Uh, Savard in particular has to be happy with that, especially after the way he ended up getting into the wall and effectively throwing away his race. Yeah, absolutely. And well, it's been a crazy one. A phenomenal, phenomenal result to end of this one. But we have got a chance to talk to some of our guys, I think, at this point. James? Potentially, not a bad idea, but more important to make sure that we hit the full field rundown and tell you where your favorite driver finished first. So we start with Nathan Jurgensen, who comes away as a single race driver, no less. Doesn't hold a season pass, but gets the victory tonight at Dover. Seth Hatchell comes home P2. Derek Justice is your winner in Class C. Was the fastest truck all night ahead of Garrett Maines, who finished fourth overall. John Theodore comes away with a podium finish in class, finished third in Class B, fifth overall. Uh, same for Tyler Dalton, who got third in Class C and finished sixth. Chris Simard was seventh, a nice rebound for him, especially at the end with that wreck with Valdi and Kemp, but he jumped up a few spots as a result of that. Aaron Rodgers comes home in eighth, ninth was Justin Vitello, and tenth was the 33 of Reese Bayham. P11 tonight is uh, Sean Boundy with Michael Jeans in 12th place. Ryan Hill in the 13th spot with David Shieldhouse, 14th David Shuck in 15th with Derek Wyanoti. Wyandotti, sorry. Brian Zimmerman, Reese Brown, Jose Mejia, Robert Sparhawk in 20th with uh, William Kempf, Ryan Gemmel, Sean Callist, John Bonwell, 24th place with Gerald Campbell down in 25th. Keith Miyato in 26th, Blake Griffith, Tom Moreno, Jeremy Watkins, Chris Carroll, Tyler King, and Adam Baker, who did not start. That is your full field rundown. 32 cars that managed to jump into this race tonight, and only one man comes away with the victory, and it is Nathan Jurgensen in the three machine for A51. Nathan, uh, I, I have to imagine that you're absolutely over the moon on this one, but... I want to head back to the point that just completely changed the race on its time. It was right in the middle when we had a lot of drivers come in and try and split the race in half at that point to try and make it to the end on one stop and even out the two runs. You stayed out after you had picked up the damage. My hunch up here in the booth is that you figured that you didn't really have the car to compete with Hatchell or Samard with the damage that you had at that time and that you needed a yellow flag in order to flip the race around and give yourself a chance again. And that's why you stayed out. Was that the case or was there something else that we didn't know about that you had up your sleeve? Nope, that's a 100% correct. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, just like an idiot, knocked the wall down out of two, really slowed my car down. I think I was... We are all, Seth and 77 and me, we're all pretty even. Like, we'd have a couple laps where one was faster. Actually, it seemed like whoever was in second was the quickest for some reason, that whole half, first half of the race. And then I knocked the wall down out of two. I probably should just let the 77 go. I was a little bit slower and falling back. So, yeah, that was, that was my move. That was my shot at it. And honestly, even if I didn't have the damage, I probably would have done it. I just couldn't imagine all these guys hanging onto their cars. It was so loose out here, uh, especially when you put the new tires and old tires on the track together. I just couldn't see this going all the way through a cycle. And, you know, I was just hoping I'd get the yellow while Seth and the 77 were uh, lapped down. And boy, probably another two laps later, uh, they would have unlapped themselves. Uh, so that put me on a pretty big advantage over Seth there in that long run coming to you know, 20 to go. And we got that before that last caution, Seth was on older tires there. Uh, so it was just me and the 77. And it looked like he got loose behind me a couple of times. I look back in the mirror and he's entering in on the bottom. So I'm guessing he got loose on exit. And then that, yeah, that last run with Seth was a uh, real fun and uh, looked like he maybe hit the wall uh, behind me there. So um, it was just kind of minimizing mistakes. I made my mistake early and they made their mistakes a little bit after me. And so I think the timing just kind of worked out for me, but man, it was really fun racing with both those guys. And to get the victory as a single race entry. First time we've had that happen in the iRacers Lounge podcast Oval Series this season. Uh, to get a win, I think, period, be pretty meaningful to you. But to be able to do it in that sense, uh, with just the one race pass, uh, just can you put it into words what it means to you to win tonight? Man, man, it, uh, it means a lot. Uh, I really appreciate what you guys do with the series and how much work goes into keeping all of us uh, drivers in line, uh, the broadcasting, everyone watching. I think that's that's just really cool to hop in here. I couldn't do the whole season, so uh, hopefully I'll get to do Chicago and uh, Rockingham. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, 
honestly, just running 250 laps at Dover uh, and not wrecking the car and not not making a big mistake with someone else in traffic and hitting all the pit stops. You know, this is just a workout. I guarantee you every single other guy that uh, now that this race is over is uh, we're all shaking our wrists right now. Our, we're exhausted. And so just doing 250 laps at Dover and getting the win, uh, that really kind of checks a box. You know, it's a driver's track, so it just feels really good. And as always, before we let you go, I'll give you a moment to send you thank yous, your shout outs, and let everyone know who makes it happen for you, Nathan. Yeah, I'm too exhausted to probably remember it all, but I'm a hood there. I don't know if you're looking at it, but A51, we're a new team. Uh, we put this together a few months back, and I've had a lot of success. And uh, we had a few A51 drivers out there, Aaron Rodgers, John Theodore, Chris Carroll, uh, sucked that he got wrecked out early, uh, Brian Zimmerman, I'm probably missing people, Spotter, Mike Seal. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting some people, but we have a good group, uh, going. So I just, yeah, I want to shout out the A51 crew, uh, and also just, you know, especially Seth, uh, him and I, we were run, running each other real hard, real clean, all race. And I, I hope I get to run with Seth again in the future. Well, Nathan, from all of us at podium, congratulations on your victory tonight. Go enjoy it. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the windy city in two weeks time. All right. Take care. Nathan Jurgensen, P1 overall and in class B tonight. Beats out Seth Hatchell for the victory overall and in class. But Hatchell comes away with second in class B and overall. And he is with Rachel Whiteford. Thank you very much, James. And indeed, yeah, we've got uh, Seth Hatchell with us right now. Seth, very, very busy race for you tonight. Very active race, of course. And uh, congratulations, second place. Just, just how tough was it out there, especially with those tires? Man, it was really tough. The start of the race, you'd think with a green track, you'd have a lot more grip. At the start of the race, I don't know if the track temp was higher or what, but we were all over the place. And um, Nathan was definitely better than us there at the beginning, and Chris was probably even with us. But as the night went on, I think me and Chris definitely figured something out, and I thought I was in pretty good shape there. And we came down to green flag pit stops, and I figured I could stay out and hope for a caution, but that would hurt me in points if it didn't work out my way. So I had to follow Chris if I wanted to try and go for the win. And it uh, unfortunately just didn't work out. But uh, Nathan drove a great race, so happy for him. But wish we could have had a couple more laps there and a couple lap fresher tires there at the end. I think we could have got them. Yeah, certainly a very, very busy one. Who makes it work for you guys out? Uh, I got to thank my team V speed, uh, especially Adam. He does a fantastic job with all the league stuff. And then my other teammates, Ryan, Joe, Keith, Chris. Um, and I like to thank all the sponsors in this league. iRacers lounge podcast. They are a great sponsor for this league and got to thank all the drivers. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. Seth Hatchell, who comes home today in second place. So Sashville comes home P2 in class, and we turn our attention now to the driver who came home P3 in class, and we welcome everyone who comes in from his stream as well as I catch the ray notification down at the bottom of my screen. But John Theodore, P3 tonight at Dover, and you seems like you had a, a bit of a handful to begin in this race, and then as it progressed, it seemed like you got a little bit better feel for the track, and right at the end of this race on fresh tires, you really found an extra gear and managed to get the podium finish in class. Yeah, it was uh, definitely an up-and-down race and a lesson, and, you know, just I need to have, you know, not make those mental mistakes early on that uh, put me in a hole. I got a speeding penalty. Um, I was pretty quick early on. I'd raised myself up you know, top three, top four, and was real competitive with those guys. And then I got that speeding penalty, and that really put me in a hole to where, um, you know, I, I was able to, it took me about like 60, 70 laps or something like that, to, uh, 50, 60 laps to race back through the field. Um, and then that caution came out right after I had pitted, so it trapped me two laps down, and just, I was, spent, I spent, basically spent the whole race digging out of that hole that I'd put myself in because of the speeding penalty but digging out you do get the podium finish get a little bit more momentum and then chicago coming up in two weeks time initial thoughts on what we should expect from this series there i mean um i i would expect that it's you know it's going to be fast you you know there's definitely room to race out there um i'm clearly you know i'm just gonna i put in 347 laps of practice on friday here at dover um and i'm gonna have to do the same thing at Chicago, just put in a ton of practice. Seth is really putting a hurting on us. He's got a scary big points lead after this one. So uh, I'm going to have to, you know, 
go out and just try to win the next three races if I'm going to try to catch them. So as you begin to prep for that, we'll give you a chance to let everyone know who makes it happen for you and let you give your shout outs to your sponsors and everyone behind the 27 team. Yeah, 10 4. Um, so definitely big shout out to uh, Corey Bush. Always, you know, just very proud to uh, be running uh, her name and her colors on there. Um, she is the embodiment of what it means to be a uh, public servant. So, uh, you know, hoping that we get her in office. Uh, with the election coming up next year. Thank you to all the guys over at Team A the uh, A51 Pro guys. Um, awesome to see Nate get in the win. Mike helping me out in the spotter stand. And then, uh, you know, we had Zimmy, we had Aaron in there. Um, Chris Carroll, unfortunately, got wrecked early, but we were having a ton of fun with that in that practice session um, on Friday night. And had I not had that, there's no way I would have been as good as I was tonight. John, congratulations on your podium finish tonight in Class B. Thanks for the time, as always, and we look forward to seeing you two weeks from tonight in Chicago. Thank you, guys. John Theodore comes home P3 in Class B, and that gives us the chance to turn our attention to Class C now. We bring in the winner, the fastest man in those trucks all night long, Derek Justice from the 31 car. He is with Rachel Whitefoot. Absolutely, yes, Derek Justice, phenomenal run from you today, up and down from first to second to third, a very, very busy race in the truck series, and um, just, how was that race? Uh, it was really good, I really liked Dover, and uh, it, it started out pretty, you know, pretty stable, then when the run goes on, it just got, uh, like, it, it got really loose off the corners, you had to really manage your, your rear tires, so, you know, to be good on the long run, but other than that, it was, uh, it was crazy, um, you know, I did some strategy early to try to separate myself in the in the uh, in the truck series. Uh, you know, put a few B cars in front of me, and it ended up paying off. So uh, that, that was, uh, I think that I wouldn't say the turning point, but it gave me a buffer to you know try some things with my lines and my driving style, and see what I like to do if uh, if it comes down to the final laps with racing uh, for the lead. So, just how was it racing around the Xfinity cars in this one, especially a track like Dover? Uh, it was almost like racing, racing against them on those. They just have a little bit of horsepower on the straightaway. But uh, other than that, uh, it's like it's like you're handicapped on the straightaway. That's pretty much it. I mean, they were pretty even in the, in the turn. So, but as the you know as the weather cooled down um, when the race went on, uh, the Xfinity cars were way faster, and because the track temp got cooler, so. Absolutely fantastic. Well, who makes it work for you guys out there on the? Uh... Uh yeah, just gotta thank Baskin Robbins purely T discovered card and uh and, and all my uh Twitch viewers they they support me uh, a lot and uh of course you guys are broadcasting uh this race on Podium Esports on Twitch and uh that's about it. This is, thank you very everybody for, for uh, putting on a good show. Well there you go, thanks for joining us. Derek Justice come on today with a win in the truck series. Derek Justice P1 Class C, the fastest man of the trucks, the second fastest man in those trucks was the one machine of Garrett Maines, who joins us here in the booth now. And Garrett, uh, I, I think of just the, the visible frustration uh, racing with the 15 and racing with, I think it was one of the Class B cars there, but I, I could tell uh, you were not a happy man stuck behind Derek Justice and watching him get away as you trying to find off everybody else. So, uh, just talk about the racing in that particular moment and, and how you managed to keep your cool as well as you did. Well, from the get go, I kind of put myself in a hole the first box or the first time uh, trying to pit in. I parked too far back in the box and that allowed some of the Xfinity cars to get past me, which really, you know, it, it didn't change my position. I still came out second in class, but uh, it really widened the gap to Derek, so I couldn't get back up to him. It took that really, really long run for him to get passed by the Xfinity cars and for me to pass some of them for us to literally get back to one, two. And uh, the next run, I was actually on pace with him. Like, you know, he found something, then I found something, and we went back and forth. Uh, but when he went back to pass me, I, I'm assuming I just rushed the throttle just a hair, and it slapped the wall just with the tail end. Got it all straight, and then halfway down the straightaway, it just veered back into the wall. And uh, that, that killed the car. And it was just a little bit. Like, I was only about, you know, probably five feet off the wall. But that five feet, <laughs> that hurt. And uh, that, that really killed killed my chances. When I was racing there at the end with uh, Aaron, like I said, it was very frustrating. Like, I knew I was faster still. 
but I couldn't do anything because one of the damage, I couldn't get a run. And then, you know, I, I knew Derek was going to walk me because the damage was you know, too much, but it was very frustrating to see the gap just widen lap after lap. As you come through it here and, and, and a frustration, I suppose, to see that gap, but at the same time, I, I think after the day you've had, uh, is it a little bit more of a relief that you come away having gone through as much as you did and coming out of here with P2 in class? Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely glad, uh, you know, to get the results still. I think we had a chance at the win had I not screwed up. Uh, I think that that was the mistake of the race for sure. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. Second place still pays. It's a good spot to be in. Uh, good points for today. Need to start beating Derek, though. I've had some bad races recently. It started off the season good and uh, just kind of kind of gone south. Garrett, before we let you go, take a moment to send you thank yous, your shout-outs, and let everybody know who makes it happen for you. I got to thank uh, 101cbd.org, Reeves & Associates, um, RacingBids.com, Jeff Bodine, Swaxing Frenzy. Um, got to thank SPG. It's been, uh, hopefully just, we can get some good results here coming up. It's, <laughs> we, we've been so close recently. Just got to get back on that roll we, we had at the beginning of the season. Well, Garrett, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the podium finish. We look forward to seeing you, I suppose, uh, two weeks from tonight in Chicago. Yes, sir. See you there. So there's Garrett Baines who finishes P2 in class, P3 in class was Tyler Dalton. He's with Rachel to speak with us now. Thank you very much. And yeah, we have got Tyler Dalton here. Tyler, very, very tough race for you back there in third place. It spent a lot of time actually quite a bit of distance away from P1 and 2, but you definitely had to contend with a lot of guys who were trying to take your spot. Yeah, that was definitely a very interesting race there. Um, we didn't have anything for Derek or Garrett. They were in a league of, of their own. But I felt like for most of the race, we were by far the third place truck, the third fastest truck. On the long run, we would really put a pretty nice gap on pretty much fourth on back. And then I honestly thought I threw it away there when I got a pit road speeding penalty with like 12 to go. But then uh, they wrecked. We, we found a hole and ended up back where we honestly probably should have been in the first place. So. Those things will happen sometimes in these races, but at the same time, third place was all going to be happy. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with third. Like I said, that's about the best I could have hoped for as fast as Derek and, and Garrett were. They were literally in a little league of their own. Um but like I said, I felt like that uh, we were the third fastest and we finished third. So I'm happy with that. Absolutely. And just before we go, uh, who makes it work for you guys out there on the 15, 19 bus? Yeah, I got to thank uh, Mr. Todd Kirkwood of Kirkwood uh, Transportation. He's my longtime sponsor. Sponsored me in podium and uh, other leagues as well. Great guy got to thank all of my uh, Twitch viewers at twitch.tv slash zone15. They were cheering me on throughout the race and pulling for me and uh, congratulating me on the third place finish. So I got to thank them. And I got to thank all the admins at the uh, podium. We had a little situation there at one point of the race where we couldn't figure out who was supposed to be on the lead lap, but uh, they got that all sorted and uh, they do a good job with, with all that. So. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Todd Alton. Back to you, Jane. That concludes our post-race interviews. And a big thank you to Merck Chicken for the subscription. Derek Wyandotte coming in uh, with the subscription to the Podium Esports Twitch channel. And a big thanks to Derek for his continued support of the best competition in sim racing. And definitely check out his car or truck, rather, by the way. Hilarious paint job on <laughs> his number 94 machine. But at this point, uh, just about time to wrap it up here. Now, we'll remind you that if you want Podium Esports merchandise, didn't get a chance to remind you during the broadcast that we've got merchandise available on the website, FlexFit hats, T-shirts, and it's the only place that you can find official Podium Esports merchandise, the only place where you can order it to represent the business competition and sim racing wherever you go. Head over to PodiumEsports.com forward slash shop for a little bit of that. And so beyond that, I think it is time for... 
Rachel White for to give us her final thoughts from uh, tonight's evening of action at Dover. Final thoughts was this was a Dover race. It was quiet in places, but it was also incredibly exciting in places with drama, excitement, and fantastic racing. Never disappoints. And Miles is a cruel. A fun place to race, an interesting place to race, and uh, definitely got my fair share of enjoyment out of tonight's action, but it was pretty impressive all around, and we look forward to the next event for this series. Chicagoland Speedway will be the next track that the Irishers Lounge Podcast Oval Series visits. It'll be two weeks from tonight, October 20th, that's Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll take the green flag for our broadcast of the sixth race out of nine in this Irish Lounge podcast old series season for 2019. But before then, we've got the Gaming Drift Series from On Top of List coming your way this Saturday, October 12th, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time to start for that. And also have the Brands Hatch Indy Course coming up for the Stock Car Challenge Series powered by iRacing iFlag, their next race. That'll be October 27th, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, the final Sunday of this month. That will do it for tonight's broadcast of the iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series here from Dover International Speedway. So, for DJ Lyon, for Gary Sexton, for John Theodore at Podium Esports, for tonight's producer, Cisco Scaramuza, and for my partner in the booth this evening, Ms. Rachel Whiteford, I am James Pike, the voice of Podium Esports. Thank you so much for watching tonight's broadcast of the iRacers Lounge Podcast Oval Series. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday for the Gaming Drift Series from Autopolis.